Welcome to Jim Norton and Sam Roberts. I don't feel good. I'm not feeling well. Huh? A funny way to open. Just sounded like Edgar. I thought you were going to say <laughs> April Falls. <laughs> no, I wanted to pretend I was still really sick. Oh, that's what you sounded like yesterday. Yeah. I feel much better today. How did it go yesterday? I only shit once more. What? When I got home. It was an, another Lulu. And then I um, actually slept before I canceled everything yesterday. I haven't done that in years. Like, I just canceled everything and stayed home. Even my spots at night. And then wound up sleeping for four hours till like 4 p.m. Maybe five hours. And then eating some saltines. I ate two sleeves of saltines. See? I love saltine crackers. Aren't they great? They're when you're sick. Yeah. I had to throw out the box today because I would have eaten the entire box. I ate, I ate, they, they, they come in smaller sleeves. Yeah, I know. I don't want to fatten up. Saltines. And I had some fruit. And I finally ate a meal last night. But I watched a lot of TV yesterday. I'm still a little tired. I'm not 100%, but I'm much, much better. So a little worn out? Yeah, you know how it is. Your but, body's fighting. But you seem better. Yeah, I feel a lot better. See, that's that rest. Sometimes a little R&R is all it takes. you got to fight these things. It does help. I mean, um, it definitely does help to, to sleep. I didn't take any medication or anything yesterday. Just uh, I ordered some chicken soup. But chicken soup sucks. That's what this show is, chicken soup for the soul. It is, yeah, but it's not the soul, the prostate. Oh. <laughs> and I got uh, chicken soup. They always put the fatty part of the chicken in it because they know that it's covered with broth and you're not going to notice. So whenever you bite the meat in chicken soup, it's like a piece of fat. Oof. Yeah, chicken soup blows. I don't eat chicken soup. I, w- I would eat it if it was homemade. Maybe if a girl with big tits wanted to make me chicken soup, I'd eat it. <laughs> That's what I want. I want a girl to come over today who has giant tits to make me some chicken noodle soup. What a great business that would be. Big titted soup chef. Mm-hmm. Home soup chef. It's like when you're sick. Yeah, a girl with giant tits comes over and just makes you soup. Like the nurse in uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I don't remember her. She comes to the door, but she's the nurse that likes to, and then the door gets slammed. I remember one time I had a, um, I had a, a dinner date. More of a friendship date. She was a fan of this show. She was an ex uh, penthouse pet. Friendship date with Meaning, an ex penthouse pet. I didn't know her. We had only talked online. You really so did eat some fruit last night, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, this is years ago. Oh. And it was. I say friendship date because I'm not trying to be delusional about what she wanted. Right. She, I don't think she was going to fuck me. I don't know. Um, maybe she would have. But I, I didn't. I, I, she's just a fan. So we were just. Hey, let's meet and eat. She may not have wanted yeah, to fuck. That's the one thing about like. Hot female fans? No, they know. There's no reputation of female fans wanting to have sex with the person they're fans with. There are, but also as and any comedian will tell you this, we we don't always get that. We for some reason they are very comfortable coming over and just meeting up with us and having a, a coffee. Ugh. Yeah, it sucks. That's like the old joke. The comedian, like the rock stars. Uh, like every time a hot chick will walk up, she's like, oh my God, I love you so much. And so do my boyfriend. Like, yeah, this, right. that's how it is. So I, you never assume you're going to get any fucking, uh, any puss. Any, any. <laughs> but I was on my way to dinner. You don't think you're going to get any muff? I didn't know. I, I wasn't sure. But on my way to dinner, I got queasy and I had to go home and throw up. Oh. So I had to cancel dinner on her while she, well, she was actually at the restaurant. I was, I was like five minutes away. I went home and vomited. And then she actually went and got me some ginger ale and some crackers and brought a whole bunch of stuff over when I was that sick. Rules. And Pet sat with me. Had taken care of you? Yeah, we just sat there and talked. She's still a friend of mine. We, um, we've never had sex before. <laughs> oh, Jesus. What are you doing? That's what, yeah. But, but it was just nice of her to do. She's just yeah. a nice person. I guess, but the reason it's fun is because you're like, oh, maybe there'll be some sex at some I point. I couldn't have at that point anyway. I was so sick. You ever been so sick that your body, you're like, you don't want to be, I wouldn't want to be touched. My dick would have just been like a little, a, a, a mouse tail. Yeah. I didn't want to be touched. A clammy mouse tail. Oh, I had no desire for sex. I was so, so sick. But then when you get better, can't you kind of make the moves then, or has she now seen you at your weakest point, so it's yeah, kind of over? once a girl watches you run into the next room and fucking and evacuate out of your asshole, it's kind of hard to be smooth. <laughs> can, you, can you put your hand on my back? Can you just put your hand on yeah, my can back? can you just support me while I'm vomiting? No. Oh. So yeah, yesterday, I wasn't that bad yesterday. I, I, I didn't know no vomiting, and, and then after, it was just like the whole body aches and hurts. And uh, I wound up watching the end of the documentary with Dr. Was Greer. I haven't seen the whole thing yet, but I had to buy the motherfucker on iTunes because the bootleg that I was watching on YouTube 
There you go. Sometimes, yeah, you don't, you don't. And you can't rent it on iTunes yet. It's too, too new. I don't rent on iTunes. I know, but I do. I always rent. And I, and I, I, uh, I bought this one because they couldn't, it wasn't an option. I it, liked it. It's such a bummer when you pause something on YouTube without realizing it's bootleg, so it's not going to be there when you go yeah. back to it tomorrow. Yeah. Like I went back to it to the, yesterday afternoon, and it was like, no, this video's been pulled. It was illegal. Of course. You go, oh, shit. There was a couple of guys in that I had an issue with. The guy with the red sweater and the mustache, I, I didn't believe him. Uh, but I think any documentary like that, like, I, I think that the, the guy who runs it, Greer, is sincere. I'm not 100% convinced. Was he the but guy? I think he did a very sincere job, and, and I liked him. Was he the guy so they would do, like, the, the interviews with all the experts? Right. This is, uh, this is the documentary we were talking about yesterday. Yeah. yeah, it's called Unacknowledged, and it's explaining, it's, uh, explaining how and why the existence of aliens has been covered up by the sure. United States government and I guess worldwide. Uh, is he the guy who they go and they talk because the strength of the documentary is they talk to experts and people who are actually there and have first hand information on stuff. And then there's one guy that they keep going back to. And he kind of tells the same story that the people who were there are telling. They got the mustache. Yeah, but he gets some of the details wrong. And you're like, what? <laughs> You're discrediting him by not having the details exactly right. And the guy said at one point they were talking about Hollywood directors and stuff like that, and a lot of them are in on it. It was a little too conspiratorial. And not him, not not Stephen Greer, but one of the guys he interviewed. And the guy goes, uh, and, and and Stephen Greer asked him, "Well, you and how do you pay these guys?" And he went, oh, "Cash." And it, I'm like, "Shut up! Yeah. You don't pay. You're not paying big directors cash." Just made that up just Does now. That, you made that up. I, yeah, I think that was back in the day. I think that was like a a. Like maybe sixties or seventies. Maybe kind of it, it possibly because was. A, a lot, you know a lot of people back then dealt with cash. They did, yeah. They still made it up. I just in the yeah, moment. I didn't like the stuff with Marilyn Monroe. There's certain things they didn't need, and that little alien body I saw briefly. They didn't harp on that. The whole documentary should have talked about that. That's that's in his other documentary. Oh, it's a, okay. No yeah. wonder. Okay, I thought I saw a flash of it. I'm like, because you'd think if there's footage of an alien body. That would be look the what entire we documentary should be. Yeah, there was one called Serious Disclosure, and it was all discussed in that one. Yeah, there was some interesting points raised. It's a little too conspiratorial for me, but but I, I still thought there were some things that they the, the people that he chose to interview. Some of them are really hard to discredit. This is where I don't agree with Neil deGrasse Tyson. Sometimes it does matter because there's people you talk to who this is like, hey, I'm going to get some attention for myself, and then there's other people whose field it's a little embarrassing to mention. And when you have an astronaut right. or a couple of astronauts talking about it, and you have, again, I keep saying airline pilot, it's kind of hard to say those guys are fucking idiots, because they're not. They could be mentally ill, but I don't, and he's obviously a doctor, he's a surgeon, well, he's not an idiot. You mean, I don't know if airline pilots, I, I would think that uh, maybe military pilots. Both, I give, but airline pilots, because they, again, they understand flight, and they understand, like, what we, like, we'll, we'll, you'll see things, like, half of those discs people see, I guarantee are military Vehicles. Guarantee it. They show it, Hitler standing in front of stuff like that. Yeah. They were working on those projects back right. in the 40s. And uh, they have much, much of other good stuff he was working on. <laughs> in the 40s, they were, they were working on that. So the U.S. was definitely working on that. So I bet you half or more of the alien sightings, quote unquote, those discs, wind up becoming the stealth bomber. Or right. prototypes for the stealth bomber. And they're just things that people are like, yeah, yeah, because they'd rather have the, you think it's a spaceman than have you go, oh, fuck, they're working on something that the Soviets don't have. And there is this idea that so they they a lot of the evidence shows that in the initial news reports and the initial government reports and all this stuff they were saying these are ufos these are flying saucers right. these are extraterrestrials and then later they were explained to be something else with the intention saying like look they covered it up later even though at first they told us the truth sure whereas they could have easily been covering it up at first, and, and then later, to, later yeah. said, hey, because now the technology is so familiar to us, it's not scary. It doesn't matter anymore. Or it could be a combination of that stuff. I don't think either one of them has it right, but I, I do think that the source... I, anyway, I was saying that because a guy who flies for United Airlines understands a lot more about lift and about the, the um, impossibility of something going up and then banking right and stopping and going back, and he knows what a stealth bomber can do and what it can't do. So, or not stealth bomber, the... Uh, the uh, the Harrier jets, the ones that would stop and then they hover and then they land. Yeah, like that's a, that's a military technology. Do typical airline pilots do they actually know military? Technology? I bet you a lot of them do because most of them are ex-military. A lot of them are ex-military. Those ones would, and a lot of them understand. They, they just understand it anyway. Like you don't have to be in on the military to know 
that world. You just, mm-hmm. you're familiar with that world. I'm not saying they know everything, but they can look at something in the sky that you or I would go, what the fuck is that? And he'd go, no, it's a Harrier jet. It's, it's, I don't know. I kind, of, I kind of feel like that's a bus driver being like, yeah, I know how tanks work. No, it's a different, it's a different world. I know what you're saying, but no, I, I think military, most, most airline pilots are military, ex-military. Those guys, of course, if you're ex-military, that's a different scenario altogether, but I can't just, if it's just like a young guy who's like an airline pilot, like I don't think John Travolta has secret, although he might, the Scientologist might have told him. Well, if but, he's flying, dude, if you're flying and you see something below you flying, they're also seeing it from a different angle. Like an airline pilot is not just seeing a light in the sky that could be a reflection of something, um, whatever. They're, a lot of times they're looking and it's on their level or below them and then it goes above them. They're, they're seeing it at 25, 30,000 feet, which is much different. There's less distractions. There's less possibilities of what it could be. Yeah, you have a I, clearer view of it. There's less city lights. Blocking. There's all kinds of reasons I think those guys are more credible. I saw that down. Denzel movie, and they could be all high on alcohol and coke, too. You know what? That is true, and he did turn the plane upside down, <laughs> yeah, so. as he does with my frown. <laughs> so you never know. I want to know if a extra, extraterrestrial gave Stephen Greer his workout regimen, because that dude is Shaq he's very, Diesel. He's very buff. He's he a is. very buff doctor. He got a little... Uh, you see his back when he's walking around? Yeah, he's a, he's a big guy. He cried at one point, but I, I liked him. Look at his fucking neck. His neck is thicker than his head. I don't know if he's... Because he's saying that these guys are debriefing him and briefing him. I'm like, who is he? That the, the guy head of the CIA would talk to him. He's probably bullying him. He's like, look at these fucking biceps. Look at these triceps. This guy I, is big. He, he's he's one of these guys who got picked on for being a science geek in maybe, high school. Yeah. So he did two things when he got older. Number one, researched the fuck out of aliens to prove they're real. Number two, got a fucking pump on in the gym. So Number three, pick steroids. On he's a big dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is. And he probably does them right. Isn't he? He's an emergency room doctor, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's a trauma surgeon. Yeah. Right? So yeah. again, another another. But again, just because somebody's bright doesn't mean they can't be wrong or mentally ill or crazy. Well, the smartest people sometimes, like the geniuses, are the guys who can convince themselves of things. They like can. Those are the people who are very. I mean, that's people who are so smart can be smart to one thing or can be good at convincing themselves and looking at this evidence and this evidence. And they're more likely to say, well, that authority figure is wrong because I'm a genius and I've done my research and I found this to be right. And I don't believe that person. I've used that example for Bobby Fischer a lot. Like he's yeah. one of the smartest guys ever and he couldn't unsee something once he thought it. And then he was able to argue, out argue anybody and convince himself. And you just get crazy and you go down a rabbit hole. And that's what I don't want to do with this stuff. Cause when you go down a rabbit hole, you become irrational. Right. Like you're not, you know, you're not, you're not fucking thinking rationally anymore and you see it everywhere and then you think that, Obama and Clinton are in on it, and I just don't believe that they are. I believe that maybe they don't know certain things, mm-hmm. but I, you know, I don't believe that they all get a walk. And well, I, that's what they—that's what they sort of said on there—is yeah. that, that a lot of the presidents have no idea what's actually going on, right? Because there's this whole government, uh, black government underbelly that, like, is, the, like the dark web. Yeah, something like that. Except the government. Yep. You know what I mean, right? And you now need tour. Now they're saying North Korea might be behind that. That whole fucking thing. The, what North the, Korea? Uh, the ransomware. The whole, oh, yeah, the yeah, whole yeah. Bitcoin thing. I read that. Well, it's not a Bitcoin thing. It's ransomware that well, requires getting Bitcoin. Bitcoin yeah, 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 to pay. Yeah, yeah. But, so the whole Bitcoin scam to get Bitcoins. Yeah. You could, you can use Bitcoins for all kinds of stuff. I, I've never used a Bitcoin. I'm, an, I'm mining for them, but I'm not using my computer. I'm doing it manually. I don't know. I'm out in my work. yard. Oh, yeah. Yes, I am. Just digging for Bitcoins. Digging for Bitcoins. I've struck Bitcoin. I want to be a computer hacker. You do? Some would say I'm already a comic hacker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my head hurts. Well, I can, <laughs> I can give you tips. I oh. spent a long time as a hacker. Uh, I saw a movie, too, I want to talk about before I forget. You're all over the place. I know, I know, I know. I'm awake today. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not sick. Bobby. I wish you were sick. All right. Um, I, I oh, forgot. I know who you're talking Speaking about. Speaking about, no, we were talking about space, and I forgot to mention, I finally watched Passengers. Passengers. Passengers with Jennifer Lawrence and Chris Pratt. Ugh. I know. It was, Why? I told you not to. I know you did. What'd we, you think? There was parts of it I really liked and I thought were brilliant, and there was parts of it I hated and thought stunk. What was brilliant? The idea of seeing that this could happen, that something like this on a 120-year, it's about a 120-year journey, Chris Pratt, there's, there's a problem with the ship. They get hit by some uh, asteroids. They have a field around them, which is protecting them. That's how they're going to do it. It's a 120-year trip. You're in suspended animation, and their their ship hits a minefield or whatever, or an asteroid field, and one gets through and puts and does a little damage to the ship, and his pod fucks up his sleep pod and he wakes up 90 years early he wakes up 30 years into a 9 120 year trip and there's 5,000 people on this thing they're all still asleep the crew is still asleep 
And now he can't, he can't even get into the crew area. But it's an amazing look at what the technology will be. Like when you, whenever you walk in, there's a That's couple not of a documentary. What's that? It's not a documentary. I didn't say it was a documentary. I know, but you were like, it's an amazing look at what the technology will be. And it's like, but it it's is. just some that's guy the, made it up. But that's what's, yeah, but that's what always happens is, is the technology kind of a lot of times follows what Hollywood is thinking or maybe it's where we're going. But I'm still I waiting to get some of those, uh, land cruisers like in Star Wars. Yeah, those Flying have not cars. come yet. But those, but those were way after. We do have a lot of the things, the, the tasers. We have those <laughs> yeah, yeah. for when someone accosts us, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so I do think that there will be something where when you walk in, the lights go on, and like you're talking to the computers, and it's much more interactive, that type of stuff. I already the clapper. To- What's that? The clapper. <laughs> it is like the clapper. Yeah. yeah. got it already. So he's on this ship, and it's this amazing isolation. He's like fucking... He's 30 years in. He has 90 years to go. There's plenty of food. He's talking to this robot bartender. It sounds cheesy, but it's actually pretty well done. It's a premise. It's Excuse not me. a movie. But I think it's a great, I think it's a good, it started off really premise. well. It started well. And then he, he's alone for a year. He's going crazy. It's kind of like the Matt Dillon movie. The but Mystic. he's not like going like crazy, crazy. He's going good looking, charming, Chris well, Pratt, yeah, 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 Chris fine, Pratt sure. movie crazy. But I mean, just the, as the movie was written, it's a year in, he's doing all these crazy things to... It's a little wacky. He hasn't shaved. Ooh. Yeah, we, I thought... He's the, losing it. What you, I thought that um, Matt Damon in the whatever the Mars movie was... Ship Potatoes? Um, yeah, so the Ship Potatoes movie was better. And that was a better look at a guy in isolation. Mm-hmm. But anyway, this guy was also pretty isolated. And then he's talking to this, this bartender robot, which again, you know, AI will eventually be able to communicate with you like that. And... He's de- he he stumbles on Jennifer Lawrence's pod, and he's debating: Do I wake her up because he's so lonely? You know, and you're like, "Don't be a dick and do it." <laughs> but I get it. You loved the movie. <laughs> no, no, I, I didn't. I liked it. I didn't love it. There was big flaws in it. You seem like you really, really loved it. No, I, I liked it because you like the love story. No, uh, I'm okay with a love story. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know me, fucking Teft in here getting shit done. The documentary no, 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 crew's not gone gonna now. That. What's that? I was telling oh. the Tef dog that the documentary crew isn't here yet. Don't worry about fixing things. That's why I watch it slowly. <laughs> yeah. Are you showing us that um the Oli Oli uh tweet? What's that? Oh, I thought that's what you're doing. He's oh, just no, no, going. Okay. He's just got the tweets up. Yeah. Oh, okay. Our tweets weren't going well, but uh, yeah, I thought it was good. But there was a few things that were kind of annoying about it. Oh, it was terrible. No, it wasn't terrible. There wasn't even a twist. There wasn't like, oh, why did this go wrong? Because sometimes shit happens. Oh, great. Cool. I'm glad you went way beyond the premise. They, was... they, they, they sold a premise to this movie, and then they just filled in a script. And they were like, here you go. And by the way, what's his face from Ocean's 13 is going to show up at the end of it for no apparent reason. What's the actor who pops up at the end of the movie? Oh, I don't even know. Uh, uh, plays the, uh, one of the crew members? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that? Uh, I fucking am blanking on his name. He's really, really famous. He's been in everything. Gary Coleman? <laughs> no, it wasn't Gary Coleman. Um, Look up... Uh, 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 I don't know. Ocean's... Yeah, whatever. Uh, uh, yeah, the IMDb. I'm almost there. Danny Ocean. It wasn't Danny Ocean. Uh, uh, Fuck! Oh, I see. George Clooney. No, it wasn't Brad George Pitt? Clooney. Keep scrolling down. Elliot Gould. Who's Al Pacino? In- Al Pacino is in Ocean's 13? Oh, yeah. I didn't, I've never seen it. I love all the Oceans movie. Was he good? Just look at Passengers. Ah, he was great. They remaking it with all women. Oceans Eight. Yeah. yeah. Are they really? Yeah, women's Ugh. version. Because I want to see how the ladies. Oceans annoying scheme. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, click Passengers. Because now he's driving me crazy. He just shows up in the end for no reason. Yeah, I, I didn't think that was necessary. What's his? Yeah, go to the IMDb. You know, you're on Wikipedia. He's just right. panicking. He's, yeah, yeah. Do you think Troy's panicking? He's fuck, he's you, think right Troy's, you think Troy's a good Googler? He's terrible. He Googles like a 40-year-old. He's a very bad Googler. <laughs> he's terrible. No, I'm 48 and I can Google my boss. I don't know. You don't Google like a 40-year-old. You Google great. I'm a very, I've seen you go. I'm, I'm a very good... In Andy high school... Garcia. Andy That was Andy Garcia? Andy Garcia just pops up at the end of the movie. He's got no lines. I didn't even realize he's it was on, him. He's on screen for one second. And it's just like, at the end of the thing, when everybody else wakes up, Andy, you find out Andy Garcia was sleeping on the, sleeping on the ship for so long. Maybe he liked the script so much and just said, I want to be a part of this somehow. I don't what know. What was to like about the script? I don't know. Maybe he just liked it. Maybe he's a producer. He's just like, yeah, but I gotta be in on this thing. I gotta pop in on the end, like, oh, 
Oh, that was a good rest. The idea that there's a lot more they could have done with it. They could have done anything with it. The idea of the ship itself, though, was really cool. And the idea that that's what we're going to go, I kind of like. I'm not going there. His isolation was, to me, very good. Uh, the idea of being alone on the ship, the premise of that. It's all premise. Being alone on that ship for fucking 90 years, what do you do? It's a great dilemma. Do you wake a girl up and fuck her? You bet I would. Yeah. Of course you would. Oh, sorry, I fell. You wouldn't wait a year. You'd wait an hour. I know, sorry, I fell and I knocked someone in your pod. <laughs> yeah. And what is she going to do? Not forgive you? I mean, she'd be mad. You have, but then again, you have stolen her life. Yeah, but you got the whole lifetime to like be like, look, are you going to be mad for the rest of your life? Yeah, I'm the only guy you can fuck. You know how mad he must have been when that fucking Larry Fishburne showed up? Like, oh, oh no, yeah. she's going to start fucking the black guy. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Good. Oh, good. He's dead. There was some really cool stuff in that. No, there wasn't. Uh, of course they did. Let me see here. It Troy, was, was, I got bad news for Troy Kwan. My, my apologies in advance. Clifford, Indiana. What's up, Clifford? Yeah, uh, on the Huffington Post, if you just Google or Bing, oh, um, yeah, Bing little it. alien, little alien body discredited, the Huffington Post, there's a scientist that said the DNA uh, was humanoid. You just Google Google. Troy brain. just Googled the word Google. <laughs> <laughs> he just, Troy, Troy, he just Googled this Google. Is, it says, I can say so what, with, I gotta uh, start somewhere. <laughs> Hold on, Troy, <laughs> Troy has, uh, uh, Troy has Huff Post. <laughs> Troy Googled Huff Post. Oh my post. gosh. <laughs> you guys are just, yeah. Huff Post. <laughs> First he Googled Google. A Google Huff Post <laughs> alien. <laughs> he, he, he Googled. No, not F. <laughs> He's about to Google Funky Town. Alien. He, he Googled Google, and then when he clicked Google to get to Google, he Googled Huff Post. <laughs> You guys are making me nervous. Well, just Google um, his you know, HuffPost alien, alien debunked. Body. Alien body. He's saying the body from the movie. Alien debunked. body debunked HuffPost, yeah. Body Wait, did debunked. You did you Google Google to get yeah. there? <laughs> there you go. Arrow down, there you are. There it is, six-inch alien. It's cruel. It's always cool to have a cock that's bigger than an alien. <laughs> <laughs> the mummified remains of what looks like a six inch space alien has turned serious, not the company, the documentary, into the most eagerly awaited documentary among UFO enthusiasts. The finding They're however, called UFO enthusiasts. Who calls them UFO enthusiasts? Gone now. UFO crazy. <laughs> The findings, however, might come as a disappointment. In early publicity, filmmakers claimed the documentary would reveal that the DNA of the creature with an oversized alien-looking head couldn't be medically classified. In fact, the film, which premiered Monday, this is a couple years ago, in Hollywood, features a scientist. He says, I can say with absolute certainty this is not a monkey. It's not a monkey. It is a human closer to human. It is human. Closer to human than chimpanzees. It has lived to the age of six to eight. How would they know? Obviously, it was breathing. It was eating. It was uh, metabolizing. It calls into question, blah, 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 blah. Uh, the DNA tells the story, uh, and we have... We saw that. The so computational we, techniques that allows us to determine in very short order whether or not this is human. But where's the disappointment? Let me see how big this it is. This is all set up. They're saying it was a humanoid. Can you go to the top torso so I can see the picture? It's his little teeth. That was a humanoid thing. When did it live? Uh, they're not sure. I mean, I and if that thing is human, it's still pretty fucking cool. Yeah. No, it's not Even human. It's it, alien. Yeah. No, it was a human. They said it was human. They said it's more human than chimpanzee saying it's alien. Humanoid. Yeah, but there was also a lot of things where it didn't have the uh, amount of ribs that humans do. There was a lot of things in it that was that was. It might have been a deformity or something, but they said it lived to be six or eight years old. But when did it live? Where did it live? How big was its pecker? Oh. Yeah, where, where, where's the part that says, oh, but now the uh, Oh, no. Bad news. Scroll God down. damn it. Hold on. Sorry to cut you off, pal. Rogan. Uh, go ahead, Brian. Let's see. Brian in hey, Buffalo. Guys. Yes. Uh, that, that Stephen Greer guy, yeah, it was on Rogan a couple of years ago, and, um, you know, it, yeah, I don't know, I, I watched the movie, too, and it seemed kind of bullshit, but is, when you get him in a long-form interview, he just starts contradicting himself and kind of comes off like total bullshit. I want to see. Well, you said Rogan uh, had the director on, and he was full of shit. I don't know if the guy's fully, I, I'm not willing to say, I, I kind of like him, I don't want to say he's full of shit. Well, of course you can't say that. He's got a documentary. I want to talk to him, and then we can make the... Yeah, but, but you but you didn't believe the Rogan interview. When did Joe interview? A couple years ago. Yeah, it was like it was like two years ago, and even like yeah, you know, just pretty polite with people when they're kind of coming off like total assholes. But the following episode, he's just like, man, I don't. Everything that that guy was saying just kind of seems like not genuine. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, that's really hard to believe that 
Joe Rogan would say that because Joe Rogan's way into the alien conspiracy thing. So I, 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 I'll I'll definitely check it out, but I severely doubt that Joe Rogan looked at Dr. Stephen Gurren and said everything that guy just said. Do you know the episode number, dude? We could, we could, uh, I don't want to look it up now. No, 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 of course not. I'm saying general. Oh, okay. I I don't know what it is. All right. Yeah. We'll check it out and and see. (laughs) The, I mean, Joe Rogan is also skeptical. Like, he believes in this stuff, but he doesn't want to just believe a guy because he's saying it's true. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like he, he should be skeptical. He should be, absolutely. All right, it's 331, but I mean the one after. I want to just, you find, it, it, just see if he says that he's full of shit. That's all. Check that out for yourself. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll look into it. I'm interested in finding out. But yeah, uh, I, mean, I, I really doubt that Joe Rogan would say that guy is completely full of shit. I don't know. Unless like he I heard it. Him. Yeah, unless you talk to him and <laughs> yeah, found him to like, be full yeah, of shit. Yeah, this guy, some guy just calls in. He's like, oh, Joe Rogan said this. Like, you know, or like Huffington Post writes something. And it's like, oh, well, we'll believe that over these other scientists that did it. It's like one of those things where you just you believe what you want to believe of it. And I'm not saying that it's it is it's yeah, an alien or diff- I'm not saying it's human. There's a difference between somebody going and disproving. Like the documentary is obviously designed to put something out there. So if a skeptic comes and says... Hey, this isn't presented in the documentary. Not only do you have to say, okay, here's contrarian evidence, but you have to say, okay, well, then it's pretty obvious that these scientists were specifically picked for this movie to put forth this narrative. I'm pretty open-minded about it. I know I don't seem like it, but I watched this very open-minded, and there's little things that, like, if someone says, I'm like, ugh. It just doesn't like there are certain things he said that made sense to me, and then that one guy he had on was like, "We paid care." I'm like, "Shut up, you didn't." <laughs> it's just even though you're right, maybe the '60s it was different. And then they asked him a couple of things. Oh, I don't think I should talk about that. That's. And then there was something that the Greer asked him about, which was highly, which was, uh, and you could tell the guy's face he didn't know. And the, the guy like, "What about the ICW or whatever it was?" And he goes, "Oh, that's highly classified. I can't." Like I could see as a person, as a human being, I know when someone bullshitting is, and the guy just didn't know. And he goes, "Ah, that's highly classified." He he, he didn't want to he didn't want to say, "I don't know about that." Or right. what is that? So he said, "Oh, I can't talk about this highly classified." It's like stop it. And then there's one thing where somebody directly goes, "Well, I'm not going to name them." Why aren't you naming them? Whenever someone in a conspiracy thing goes, "Well, I'm not going to name names," really? Right. The, well, the job is to debunk. You're trying to fucking talk about alien life and you won't name the directors. Name everybody. Name these people at Time Magazine you spoke to. Name fucking names. Otherwise, it's uh, you, how can you take it as credible? You talk about human civilization and an alien civilization. You think protecting somebody's anonymity as a director is more important? Than, like, that's what bugged me. Like, well, you know, you also got to keep in mind, too, like what they say is above scientists, above whoever, they're humans first. So... You know, to come out with some, to say something that they know that they could get into a lot. I mean, they're already, they're already putting themselves in a bad place by coming forward with a lot of the stuff that's been classified. But the fact that they're already putting themselves in a bad place means the only thing that's going to put them in a worse place is if they say something that's not true. Right. And you ever see whistleblowers? When whistleblowers, uh, blow the whistle on something, they, they blow the roof off the joint. They fucking say everything. There's no coming back there's anyway. There's no coming back anyway. Like Edward Snowden, or these guys, we're, by the way, where's all this information from WikiLeaks? Or from the uh, NSA, none of this stuff was in any of these leaked documents. And if there's, you know, and this was with 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 uh, Chelsea Manning, Edward Snowden, and and WikiLeaks, none of them have come out with anything like this. And that kind of just alien stuff about aliens. Yeah. Oh, that you're completely wrong. What am I? Uh-uh. I, mean, I hope I'm wrong. What, what, tell me no, what there they, was a, there was a lot of stuff. There was stuff in Podesta's emails, and that's if you watch the end of the documentary, he, Podesta goes into a huge uh, talking point about aliens and how if if Hillary had wins, she's going to expose this. And and he uh, he just wouldn't give a solid answer. They're like, "What do you think? What do you think about this?" And he's like, "I think there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, there's the galaxy is huge." Um, but yeah, I mean, you could. There was a lot of stuff in in Podesta's emails about it, and that was even what uh, the dude from Blink One Eighty Two he was in the WikiLeaks talking about aliens. Tom too. DeLonge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, hey, hey, we might not have Podesta, but we got Tom DeLonge from Blink One Eighty Two. But we, yeah, but where's like these CIA documents and stuff in in all these leaks? I don't, I don't remember Podesta's emails. To be honest, you might be right. I, dude, I don't know. It, it said pizza. It meant aliens. Yeah. You gotta you gotta read beyond what's said in the emails. <laughs> what do you think of the uh, so so? Doesn't that disturb you at all though, that they haven't no, had this? No, it's time trade? to launch, bro. <laughs> but that this <laughs> giant WikiLeaks dump hasn't happened. Like you, Julian Assange would do it, and so would Snowden, and so would Chelsea Manning if they had, they had access. To they it. got nothing to lose at this point. They had access to everything, and they didn't come out. There was no giant alien thing. That would have been front page news. They, they might have been a thing in Podesta's email alluding to something, but there's nothing like what you're talking about or what this Greer is talking about. Pepperoni, flying saucer, yeah. 
You see? Yeah. You see the connections? You gotta connect the dots. But I mean, you, you know, in the documentary though, you, you can't deny that there's an overwhelming amount of evidence that says there's something is, something's weird. Something is a little weird, but it's, the, the whole alien phenomenon is just, it's not completely bullshit. There's something there with it. Even the footage that they showed wasn't bad, but almost none of it necessarily convinced me that it was craft from another land. Like, you know, hearing the coroner from Roswell, I do give that guy is, is credible. Yes. That guy, yes. A, another guy who was credible was the soldier who originally found the craft, Jesse something, whatever his name is. That's what I love. Very old. All those first-hand accounts. Definitely made the documentary worth watching. Yeah, those guys, it, I don't call those, because those guys were just living their lives and they were thrown into this. But then again, when you're that guy, there's also the human element. Is it hard to just go, I've been put in this amazing story, this fucking huge story, and now just, do I want to say, no, it's bullshit, or do you like being part of the lore? Maybe there's a little temptation there, too. Yeah, and, yeah, part of that, and maybe, too, it's it's a thing you've been saying for a long time. And there's, it's kind of tough to go back on it. And, uh, okay, here's a question. I don't even know what this is. Uh, go ahead, Shane. It's a mouse. No, not that. Oh. Come on. Oh, Jim, I'm being sweet. I'll say you are. <laughs> go ahead, Shane. Ask Troy. Hey, Troy, what do you think's going I got two questions for you. One is, what do you think's going on down in Antarctica? <clears throat> uh, no. Antarctica is a, a, definitely a strange place. Hitler had a huge fascination with Antarctica. Sure, because it was white. <laughs> <laughs> and he had built bases down there. Uh, supposedly, there's portals, and uh, also th- there's also. Some do you think belief- there's portals in Antarctica? Uh, you got me, man. I don't know. I've never been there, but they do like say that, that, show that there's maybe could be right. <laughs> they do say that there's uh, alien cities. Some people believe that there are alien cities underneath the the ice. There is something strange about Antarctica. I'm not quite sure exactly what it is. There's an alien theory that aliens already exist on this planet, and they don't live in space. They live in the middle of the planet, right? So, like in that hot magma core is where aliens live in the middle of the Earth. And in order to get to and fro, there's portals in Antarctica. Is that? A theory? So, so, something along those lines. Yes. yes. I'm not sure of the exact information. To be honest, if alien ships, this also makes me doubt alien ships. All right, thanks for the call. Wait, I got one more oh, oh, go ahead, buddy. Hey, and then Troy, that uh, cyborg you brought in last week, you ever get a hand job from her? And if so, <laughs> you use the real hand or the fake one? Cyborg. <laughs> I've never gotten a hand job for, I've never done anything sexually with her, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good day. All right, Jay. Yeah, another thing is this. We're, or, if, the fact that there are, if UFOs came, we'd probably yeah. never see them. <laughs> we'd probably never see them because they would be able to cloak themselves simply because we're, our military is already working on things. Invisibility with, cloaks? With, with cameras. Where the camera, like where, you, where the front of you is a screen. Right. And there's a camera behind on your back and you're literally, the front of you is a screen of what's behind you so it looks like you're invisible. We're already working on that. Now in 2017, picture a thousand years advanced technology. I mean, the Jesus, they'd have that for you know, that, that would be nothing. You, you, they'd be able to do anything without being seen. Yeah. So the fact that there's all these pictures of these clunky things with with big lights that spin in a circle, like why would an alien ship have a light on it that spins in a circle? Boom, boom. Like for what? Maybe they have bad. Like uh, I mean, the things that come naturally to us maybe don't come naturally to them. They're very good at uh, interstellar space travel. Bad at hiding. Yeah, they're they not suck at hide and seek. They're not good at like they, they. They never thought about subtlety may not exist on whatever planet they come from. Maybe it just never occurred to them. Like oh, there is an advantage to being subtle about things. Well, maybe they think that we're such chimps. Then we can look at them, and that nothing we can do can hurt them anyway. So why not? Kind of like with like um, little ant people. But when we go observing things, a lot of times we don't disguise ourselves. We just go and look at them because they can't do anything about it. Right? Oh, can you imagine how uh, the aliens? If they were like, oh, these Earthlings aren't going to do anything to us. We can bring our big ships. It doesn't matter. And then they get like shot down and killed and disembodied and stuff. You'd be so disappointed. You really called yeah. that one wrong. It'd be like the way we go on safari. Like once in a while, someone gets hurt on a safari. Right. 98% of the time, we can just go and look at these dumb animals eating and there's nothing they can do about it. They probably see us the way we see aliens. Like, like we're kind of like we're a myth. Like they're like, oh, saw something in a Jeep. You know, two rhinos are talking. <laughs> like, no. 
And but we can't they can't do anything about it. But once in a while they get to horn somebody. That's how it is with us. Yeah, every now and then somebody leaves a window open and a tiger pulls them out. Yeah. Yeah. And then it becomes the thing of lore. Then the, 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 our Roswell is that lady getting pulled out by a fucking tiger <laughs> <and> eaten. <laughs> Uh, you know what else I watched for hours last night? Literally two okay, hours. So you watch, you watch lots of space stuff. You watch the rest of the Alien documentary, which is what's it called again? Unclassified, uh, un- unacknowledged, unacknowledged, an, an expose of the world's greatest secret. I'm um, glad people need to know the uh, the subtitle on that. Um, then you watch Passengers. Then what was it? What else did you watch? I googled a lot of um, people who are like just capturing bee swarms, Why? and one guy who's moving a bumblebee nest. I watch you love Google and bee shit. Things with bees I watch for hours. Why? Because they scare me so much. Me too. And to watch these guys, like to watch these guys be so on, like, like around, you know, killer bees, they wear suits. They're not stupid. Shaolin. I don't know what that is. Killer bees. Oh. <laughs> Wu Tang. <laughs> and they, they, they wear suits, but around these things, they'll uh-huh. wear them once in a while, but they wear, they go gloveless. That's crazy. Yeah, that always drives me because I'm terrified of bees. Yeah. And when I watch videos where the guy's like, oh, yeah, I just got stung like 9, 10, 11, 12 times. Probably I got stung 50. When, what do they do? He's like, oh, that tore me up. <laughs> <laughs> but he's so unafraid of it. Yeah. He's like, yeah, they tore me up pretty good today. Uh, yellow jackets they're scared of. Don't you, know, you wish you could get there psychologically? Yeah. Where you just have no fear of bees to the point where they can sting you and you don't even react. The guy taught with the bumblebees. He had to move a bumblebee nest. He goes, he goes, I don't care about bumblebees. He goes, you know, they're in this guy's property. I just don't want them killed because they do pollinate. He goes, so I'm going to move them to the edge of my property, but they're not going to do anything for him. He's not going to use them for their honey. He right. Go. But he showed the bumblebee nest and he said they were really aggressive um, when you fuck with their nest. And he, he, he took the rock where it was hiding. And you just see this cluster of bumblebees, and it was so uncomfortable. Yeah. And then they had guys capturing swarms of like you know, like three hundred thousand bees or a million bees. They're in a tree, and these guys will fucking shoot a bu- an arrow with a string over the branch, and then it goes to the other side. So they kind of have a bow uh-huh. over the branch, and the branch is maybe fifty feet in the air. And there's a you know there's six hundred thousand bees in a swarm, and they back a pickup truck with eighteen bee boxes in it under it. And then what they do is the one guy on one side of the rope, one guy on the other side, they both yank and it shakes the cluster loose. Google, Google bee cluster, bee, bee swarm capture and they fucking drop the entire swarm of bees falls onto the, onto these, uh, bee boxes and they have queens in the bee boxes. Oh. Uh. So what happens is then the bees tend to, to, to gravitate towards the queens, but they had 18 queens. Wow. Go to that one. Yeah, go G fork or whatever. You just see how they do it. And it, usually a lot of times they'll get right up there with a box and they'll hold it. And the bees still swarm. Just, just. Uh, my friend Janelle calling from oh, Michael this guy's Michael dressed. Michael. You just zip into the middle. We don't have to. Would you do this? Never. Maybe with a suit on, I would. I would not even with a suit on. Yeah, no you know the amount way. of courage I have to muster to kill one bee when it gets Hold on. Okay, apartment? go back a little bit. You I see how he gets under watch. No. Beat up See, they put the bee things in there. Coming to check it out. In, okay, so it's like a box. In this house and give them a home. A box with little homes, and he goes under. The, now this guy's got a suit on. This is not a giant cluster. It's a box with a honeycomb in it, and this is wow, like he's, an, hold, he's grabbing the uh, this is the branch. A, this is in an urban area, and he, and he shakes the whole thing into the bucket. He puts the bucket over the hive. How docile they are. Gets up on the tree and just puts shakes the hive into the bucket. But look at all the Swarm. bees crawling all over him. Camera guy's an idiot too. And, and they then, just, he dumps oh, that bucket full of bees. It's, oh, I don't even like hearing it in my head. He dumped, look. Just to watch them. Look at how mellow they are. And you can see here. I'd be so pissed. That there, are there was a. The entrance fanning with their tails in the air. There's a hole in the box? To come here That's so them, stupid. Telling the other bees to come here because this is our home. Is that amazing? And you see, wow. they said you could turn it out. Bees are very, terrifying. they're terrifying to me too. Bees are very, very, they said they're pretty docile when they swarm. A this is a there. small child. I would love to take a boot and just walk on top of that pile of bees. <laughs> <laughs> there, there was a hive on my block last summer, 
like just hanging from a tree mm-hmm. and and it wasn't it wasn't like that there was maybe like a, a dozen bees that were going in and out of it mm-hmm. i i avoided that side of the street oh yeah all summer and they probably won't bother you if you're just walking they, do, I did they really don't but out. they might i've they watched might. so many of these i'm a little less scared of them than i used to be i'm terrified of bees but they they, they do terrify me too and these guys fuck with I, but i've seen get like a lot of them where the guys are putting their hands through clusters of bees mm. and they don't sting you they, there's weird times where bees won't sting you yeah but i bet they would sting like us because we're all afraid of them and they yeah, would they sense know. that yeah. they would now they run like, away all the time oh pussy boy do you flail oh here. boy do i <laughs> are you a flailer i i would i would leave my daughter if a bee was coming at both of us it's scary, right? Yes, I don't, and I, and and the only reason I'm, I'm sure m- most of that reason is because I've never been stung before. Yeah. Oh, never, never. I have a couple times when I was a kid. Yeah, I, I think stepping on one and once in the ear. But when you watch these guys handle it, like yellow jackets are mother. Ugh. This one guy who's my fucking hero. He's a southern guy. I think we interviewed him once on the morning show when I was with Opie, and it was it was not a great interview. He just you know we just we didn't know what to talk to him about. It was just a guy who handled bees. But he did a yellow jacket's nest once, and that took him a while. And he actually had to go home and get suited up because this is the guy that does them bare chested. He'll have he'll have no Stupid. fucking he'll have no shirt or gloves on, and he'll literally just walk in there with a fucking thing of smoke and rip out a honeybee nest that's that's fucking half a wall. I've seen him do it. He just likes to get in there. He doesn't give a fuck. This guy, he's crazy. Jess always catches me like she doesn't want to tell me when there's a bee around because I try to keep my cool, but I just twitch like a madman. Like I'm just like making. Aren't you convinced the they're going to sting you? I'm so scared. Even would you one. go to a bee farm? No. I want to go to one just to get over this fear. I hope you go to a bee farm then. I, mean, I would it, never go to a bee farm. And maybe get stung by one. I don't need to. Why? Who cares about being not they, they being afraid of bees? They sting you medically for medical reasons. There's actually the reason they sting. Why would Why would you care about not being afraid of bees? Just be afraid of bees. I don't want to be afraid of them. Why? Because there's no reason. Even yellow jackets. They're not going to bother you when they're looking for soda. <laughs> they scare me, the yellow jackets. I'm telling you, it's often when we used to break bees nests up when I was a kid, we'd throw rocks at them. Yeah. And I watched my friend Denny running away with three bees on his arms, screaming and crying. I'll never forget three yellow jackets on his arm. He was running. Ah! And, and there you saw three, him. I, there were three of them. His arm was out straight. And instead of brushing them off, he was running with his arms out straight. And, and were they just repeatedly stinging him? I believe they were, yeah. But he, we, we, we were, there was a giant yellow jacket nest in our apartment complex. And we used to throw rocks and then spray poison on them. And we would fucking, I was fearless back then. Like I would always fuck with bees. Cause nothing can happen. There's no consequence. Dude, I used to catch them with a jar. Uh-huh. And I remember I would catch them and I remember I, I would catch like 50 bees in the same jar and they would fly wasps. I didn't care. <laughs> you walk over, you open the lid real quick and capture the bee. And I would have a jar full of bees for no reason. And I just developed this terror of them. Yeah. You've been stung before. Not not since I was a kid, like before then. Yeah. I don't know what made me so afraid. I'd be so upset if I was uh, uh, traveling to another planet because I heard there was life there. And then you land on the planet and realize it's just bees. Oh, that would suck so <laughs> no. much. They're all bees. They're not friendly. Or, or if a spacecraft lands on Earth and then you open up the door and a ton of bees just fly <laughs> out. <laughs> oh, that would stink. Oh, watch this guy. Go go back to that. Guy capturing a queen from the middle of a swarm with his bare hands. Go, you just had it. You just go back one. No, you just, you just had it. I don't know what you're doing. There yeah. you go. Top one. You can just watch for a second. He's fucking going to, he's going to go through this bare hands. Look at all those bees. He's too busy not giving a fuck. Would you do that? No. No. Look at here right now. There's a bunch of bees crawling out of this thing. This guy's rifling through them gently. He's got like uh, like a tool. With tweezers. It looks like it's one, a woman. Some kind of she's got like some kind of it's either a honeycomb or a speaker putting No, out no, some no. Kind it's a sound thing to put or... the queen in. Oh, that's the box? That's the that's the coffin. Look, yeah. No, no, just to keep the queen. They're they're in like a thing of hay. And he so so she's just digging through all the bees to get to the center so she can find that queen. Yep. I hate queen bees. I hate them. It's my nickname, Queen Bee. Yeah. <laughs> I wish the audio was better. Why? It's just some lady talking. How did you find her? Yeah. The queen bee. There you go. Wow. Oh God damn. There's a giant queen on her. And she put it on her finger. They're not stinging her. Look at her. She's like with her finger. She's pushing the queen into the box. How are you not getting stung? Tap, 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 tap. She taps in the box. it. 
Yeah, I hate she lost her. I wouldn't. Would you fuck with bees like this? No, I go and do something else entirely. There's so many things to. I do. hate how bees hover. How they just hover, like little helicopters. Okay, someone had a honey bee invasion. They fr Hello, Lori. What's up? Hey. So um, I live in New Jersey, and I noticed I'm in my kitchen. I've got like the high hat lights in my kitchen, and and I noticed a bee flying around my kitchen. Freaked out, sprayed it with Windex, eventually. <laughs> like, oh, good, Windex so you knew all the methods. And, yeah, you, you numb it, and then it kind of gets all confused, and then you whack it. <laughs> so so I, I got that one, then I turn around, and another one. And, and I notice they're all dropping out of the hi-hat lights in the kitchen. So I go outside, I shut the door, I look in the corner, there's a mat, like overnight, we just got invaded on the side of our house. So I call an exterminator, he comes out, I can't do anything, they're honeybees, they're endangered, you have to rip the wall out and get a beekeeper to come over and, and deal with it and homeowners insurance won't cover it and just all this shit. So I called a friend of a friend and he came out. I don't know what he sprayed in there, but he got rid of those <laughs> Wait, did he kill them? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're always better off, especially with honeybees, you're better off not killing them because they are endangered. And, and I know it's expensive, what? but a beekeeper can come and get them without any problem and just relocate them. Yellow yeah, jackets you got to kill. They're mother hornets yeah. or motherfuckers. Why don't you just? Keep, what do you care about keeping honeybees alive for? No, nah, they they're very valuable. They pollinate. They're fucking. They make. They're great. They're great at insects. They really are. The more I look at these things, watching this one guy when he fucking ripped out this shed full of bees, and then he just ate some fresh honey off the comb. <laughs> you like that, but dude? He was my. This guy's my. I want to hang out with this guy. He's like getting some fresh honey, and he gives it to the guy and the the guy's son, and they're all eating fresh honeycomb. The guy's hands are all sticky. He didn't give a fuck. I get the cereal. I want to get strippers yeah. with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> you think he wouldn't mind getting some juices on his hands? He was the best. All right, someone has said, all right, thank you, Lori. Uh, Thanks. this guy has said, now this happened to Dutch and can, my friend Frank, when he was a kid, I remember, and this also scarred me, he said when he was like five, he, he there was a low hanging wasp nest and he just grabbed it with his hand and the fucking bees stung him because, you know, they don't like when you grab their house. Yeah. I'd be pissed if some big person Picked up my house. Yeah, that would be very frustrating. I try to bite them. Dutch, what happened? Go on now, Dutch. Uh, good morning there, boys. Has your wooden shoes. Huh? Oh, you sound much better today, Jimmy. Thank you. I feel a lot better. I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, when I was when I was a kid, I was doing some landscaping with my dad in the backyard, and I stepped on a yellow jacket's nest in the Oof. ground. Yep. And they, they all just shot up and they started stinging. I got stung a couple of dozen times because they don't die when they sting. They can keep stinging the fuckers, right? Yeah. So my dad sees me rolling around in pain, and I look at him, and he looks at me, and he yells, Snake? I go, No, no, bees. And he goes, Bees? And he runs inside. <laughs> I'm like, What the fuck? <laughs> so I, I, it was pretty bad. That I had to go to the hospital because it was just so much, right. so many stings. So the next day when I'm home, I go outside and do what any teenager from New Jersey does. I go outside with a can of Lysol and some matches, <laughs> and I'm spraying the area where the nest is, and the ground started catching on fire, and all the railroad ties started catching on fire. And so I had a fairly small fire in the yard. My dad had to come running out and put out and just make things worse. Did that kill the nest or no? No, I don't think I was anywhere near the nest. I think I was just... Angry. You just uh, left the backyard on fire. Thanks. So, yeah, so Dutch just sat there and went duty in his pants and then, angrily. And then set a fire. Yeah, that's, uh, oh, someone's a beekeeper. I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated by, uh, attacked by hornets. Oh no, before I go to the beekeeper, Robin, it, hor now, here, the hornets fucking are terrifying. But I've also watched videos of guys who feed them. If you put honey on your finger, this guy was hanging outside a hornet's nest with his finger. Hornets will land on your finger and literally just eat the honey off and, and fuck off. They're not as skilled as the 94 Charlotte hornets. That's a good point. Larry Grandmama Johnson. That's a good point. Larry Johnson? Yeah, Muggsy Bose. Yeah, I know Larry Johnson. Do you? Well, I don't know. Well, we've talked. Oh, Grandma. Who's the, other, who's the other guy? Muggsy Bogues. Yeah, Muggsy Bogues is little, oh, isn't he? No, Bose. <laughs> Bose, yeah, he has uh, his own headphone line and everything. What's up, Rob? Hey, hey, Jimmy. Uh, hey. I love you guys. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to let you know a little story that happened to me when I was uh, about eight years old. I, I stepped in a ground hornet's nest, and they uh, went after me. They attacked me, and they were literally everywhere. My mouth... 
my ears. Uh, my mom had to scrape them off me with a butcher knife, and Jesus. it almost killed me. Oh, my God. Why did you do to get them to sting you so much? I stepped in the, Tried the blowing one. that was on the ground. <laughs> Yeah, you oh, step just... on the nest. This guy, we're watching right now. This guy, he's. The, thank you very much for the call, Rob. This guy is it's called hand feeding my observation colony of Vespa Duclaeus, large Asian hornets. He has them in his house, I think. He has hornets in his house, and he has the window open. Guys, people are asking. And he's got his fingers up with honey all over them, up by the fucking hornet. He's literally touching the nest, and they're not bothering him. There's so much stuff to do people on are this so planet. The people are so badass, though. No, it's not badass. It's stupid. Yeah, hey, just play video games. Yeah, I, look, I got bees in my house. I'm such a bad. At, nobody will ever impress me by Dude, having I any just form like of the fact bees that they, in their house. I know, I know, but they're so scared. I Tony in Wisconsin, in you're a beekeeper. <laughs> Go on now. Um, <laughs> I uh, I do. I started uh, beekeeping uh, about a year ago. I want to frolic and, uh, with bees. What? And I started a bee club. And I started in a bee. What club. the fuck's yeah, a bee awesome. club? Bunch of girls with small tits. <laughs> <laughs> so I would watch all these YouTube videos of like these southern guys, and all they have is uh, tanks, uh, tank tops, and shorts on, messing around with their bees. And so, just I have a really aggressive hive from last year, and I went up, just with like dress pants on and a shirt. You mean slacks? And, yeah, like slacks, and I got lit up just a couple weeks ago. Wait, did you, what were you doing to the hive that you got lit up? Because some some of these are aggressive. A lot of times they have to requeen the hive with a less aggressive queen. Yeah, I was just going to take a couple. It's like what's um, going on in our country? Hive and, and put it in another hive, and uh, I thought I would just take two, and I was doing pretty well. And then I took the third one, and then it just kind of murked me. And uh, <laughs> they murked you. Did you panic and drop the thing, or no? I uh, I I didn't panic, but um, I was trying to shrug it off, and I. Um, was talking to my wife and she was like, "What happened up there?" And I'm like, "Oh, I got stung a little bit." And she goes, "Yeah, you did." And I look and my elbow is all swollen. How many? Did you like, how many times? Uh, eight times. Hey, why do why do you why do you care about bees so much? Uh, I have a big garden and uh, you know they're endangered and and plus the honey. So now when you get the honey, do you what's in that smoke? What is that fucking? What's the chiba? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, is, what, what is in that fucking smoke thing? Uh, you put burlap or like straw, and you start a fire to confuse them. But uh, I always put the out and uh, get nervous, and my smoker dies out, and then I kind of piss myself up there while I'm messing around with my bees. What do you Wait, mean, what do you, hold on. When you, how do you get the honey? How do you get them off the comb to get the fucking honey? I'd love to eat some honey right off a bee comb. That shit is probably tasty as a motherfucker. I w couldn't care less. Oh I come never on, honey rules. Life. You ever go to the store and you buy the fresh honey in the comb? No. Holy shit. Yeah. No. You know what right? I do? That's real good. Awesome. You, you know why you don't need bees? Because high fructose corn syrup is just as good as honey. No, but it's, it's something just, good about it. It's just as good. Um, well, how do you get the bee? How do you get the honey off, sir? Well, uh, you basically, uh, you know, create another box and a screen where they can't, the queen can't go lay up, lay her eggs, and you take that box off and then you, uh, you, 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 Get the bees off with a brush and then put it in. Uh, Ew. Put it, <laughs> All right. Get them off. All right, Tony, uh. I got to cut you. We got to take a break. Thank you very much. I apologize for cutting you off. Ricky Gervais is 10 minutes out. So we'll take a quick break so we have a, a quick, uh, we can do our reads and stuff. Travis, you're fine with high fructose corn syrup instead of honey, right? Yeah, no, fuck bees. You yeah, fuck bees yeah. altogether. I don't care if it crumbles the, you know, the ecosystem. Yeah, whatever. Doesn't um, matter. Does not, not matter. Sting me. Quick yeah. plugs. Uh, I'm going to. Uh, not my pollen, not my problem. The Borgata in August, and I got the Montreal in July. The Montreal. And tomorrow night I'm doing uh, the Comedy Cellar, a black, fat black pussycat. No, tonight. Fat black pussycat around the corner of the cellar working out the new hour material. It's been going really, really well. So if you want to come see me for five bucks for an hour, I don't even know if there's any tickets left. It's, um, it's on, uh, it's around the course on McDougal on West Third. Hey, that's West Third. That's a steal at any price, but five dollars. Take advantage of it. And folks. the new Chip podcast is getting rave reviews. The Mother's Day special. The Mother's Day special. Rave reviews. It's on YouTube on Riotcast and uh, get our, our podcast is up. Yeah, new yes. one's up today. We have uh, Maria Bamford and Chris Gethard on Correct. there. It's up now. Yeah, two really really good interviews. So uh, I enjoyed both of those guests very very much. You can search Jim and Sam Show on iTunes or SoundCloud and download and subscribe and leave a review and a rating and all that jazz. Chris is special, by the way. Yeah. Amazing. Okay, it's great. great. I'll watch it. It's, it's great. so good. And it's a, it's, a, it's a one-man show. Yeah, it's yeah. not it's traditional like, stand-up. Yes. And uh, Ricky Gervais coming up next. All right. We are back and waiting for uh, Ricky Gervais to arrive. Uh, I'm sure he'll be here very uh, shortly. 
Heck yeah. Uh, easy. You're right. So are you, uh... I'm not mic'd up. Hello, uh, and welcome back to the show. Uh, Should I look into this one? You can, yeah. Dump the camera for well, me to we, look. We have the audio here. The documentaries are guy, our guys are back today to do a little bit more with me and finally do our interview afterwards. Wait, are you going to be there, or... He's going to be... You have to be there. Fliz Oding. Um... Uh, yeah, but the, there's, there's a way it has to be set up. Yeah, which, uh, what's wrong? Did, did Travis tell you where? There's a way that it has to be done today. It's not my yeah. yeah no, so, so right here, I guess so. Yeah, okay. thank you. Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. All right, cool. Because Travis talked to uh, whatever they're, 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 they weren't supposed to be here today. They're supposed to just be here yesterday. But I could. I was too sick to even do the interview. Yesterday, so they've come back graciously today. I felt the documentary bad. crew, you mean? Yeah, I, and um, I canceled everything yesterday, and it just went home. Well, I'm glad you did. You see, you're you're much better today, and not only are you better, but you came to the table with all kinds of information about aliens and bees. Yes, I did. Um, because, but it's amazing how the phones explode when we talked about bees. Right. Everybody's well because everybody knows bees are real. Aliens, it's the debate rages on. Yeah. But bees are for sure I'm real. Very and afraid. Terrifying. But I am very afraid, and, and, and you know, not to harp on it all day, but I do want to do something which makes me unafraid of bees. I don't know what ultimately that will be, but I do want to go and do something which makes me not afraid. Of Maybe go to a bee farm and pet a few bees. I don't think that's going to do Yeah, it doesn't work. Why not? I think dying is the only way I would not be afraid of bees. You might be. If, what if you had a beard of bees? You have a beard already. Yeah. Well, yeah, you're married you to, to anything. one. <laughs> There's a beekeeper association in New York City, Jim. But you can go to that. What different? What, just be afraid of bees. No, I, I, I want to. Okay. I want to put my hand through a bunch of bees and feel them tickle and crawl over me. Ah, stupid. Yeah, it's Do a it. waste of everyone's time. Just Why? like just use cat whiskers instead. No, I don't want cat whiskers. It'd be adorable. Yeah, I mean, it, it, there's no reason to not be afraid of bees. You've got a roof. I don't want to be afraid of bees though, because it ruins my life when I'm at a barbecue. When are you yeah. at barbecues? All the time. You're not. Yeah, but I want to start going. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what's holding you back. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I'm t but I, I think it's funny that Travis is a flailer. So you basically oh, do the, the, the nanner puss dance. Yep. Just ran. I don't even look where I'm going. You I, know, may, I just run he may like where pancakes, the bee is not. But he does not like bees. No. But you know, swarms of bees are pretty... Docile, as I've said. So if a swarm came, you could just stand there and turn around. They wouldn't bother you. No, you know who thought, run away from them. Do you get creeped out by butterflies? Butterflies creep me out. No. no. It's a butterfly. They yeah. fucking... They, they have this thing where you can walk into a room full of butterflies. Yeah. Fuck you. That would terrify me. No. What are you doing any of this stuff I read for? The Hungry Little Caterpillar. I know what happens. Yeah. yeah. What happens? They they eat a bunch of cake and then they have a become a butterfly. A butterfly is just a caterpillar on his deathbed. Yeah. Oh, I thought that was a fly with an ugly face and a good body. <laughs> Get a butterfly. <laughs> uh, that was fucking terrible. Good thing uh, the documentary crew came back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm really glad that they got that one on tape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope they used that. Oh, me too. It's always good to have. And sometimes <laughs> there are bombs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand this fascination that humans have with nature. I mean, we've we've spent so much time building structures and creating tools that allow us to not interact with nature, and yet there are people who are like, "Oh, I want to go hang out with animals." Like, no. You know who hates nature? Woody Allen. But we see how he fucking fills his time. So I don't know if hating nature is the best. It's not idea. one or the other. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. If you're not outside and camping in the woods, you're fucking you're fishing around in the crib. <laughs> Creep. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't particularly care for nature either. That's all right. We're actively destroying it. So. You know. Ooh, someone's got a statement to make. <laughs> no, I mean, we just keep building stuff, so eventually yeah. all those bees will be gone. Have do you think that's go. bad? Do I think mm. what's bad? That we're wrecking it. No. Huh. What do you, I mean, do you think that it's bad if we destroy honeybees? No, I don't care. Here's a fun fact about Africanized honeybees. They oh have the same God. potency as regular bees, but they're just more aggressive. They don't, they don't have any more poison in them or more venom. Hey, but they're more likely to sting you. Yeah, a lot more likely to but sting then, you. But nah, I don't want anything to do with them. I know. And thanks for the fun fact, though. You're very welcome. <laughs> Someday that's, that's going to get me. I have this person. Who's, I, I, I attract really weird. I have to block this person. What's going What? Just mentally ill people. Yeah, you do. Uh, how do I block this person? But I think that's fun at first for you, isn't it? Um, what was up with you and, uh, and uh, Mary Jean, by the way, over the weekend? I was following on Instagram. Oh, yeah, I saw that. See, my weekend was like very sort of... 
traditional and typical. It was very sweet. It was Jess's first Mother's Day, and we were with the families, and there was little, you know, babies and toddlers and whatnot, and it was all very, very nice. You guys dressed the same? No. I let Jess know that that would be the, the, that (laughs) had first, the first and last instance of that had already occurred. But, and I saw on your Instagram, that you were canoodling. I wouldn't say it was canoodling. With fingers merry. Yeah, no, no, she came over and we watched a, uh, I guess we watched a movie. Did we watch a movie or just hang out? Who remembers? Uh, Netflix and chill. Nobody remembers what was on Netflix. We didn't fool around though at all. Like literally, not even remotely. Why? I don't know. It's fine not to. I'm a weird dude. I mean, I know it's fine not to, but it's really great too, right? Just enjoy her conversation. It's <laughs> bizarre. It's, it's not, I don't get those kind of vibes from her, so I'm like, ugh. I mean, dude, Jim, you're a very smart guy. I, I'm not quite sure what the hell you talk about for an extended period of time with her. She, we, <laughs> we just hang out and watch TV and yap. Thank you very much, Paul. What a good boy. He brings my eggs. Can you make sure those cameras are on? Yeah. Yeah, they are. Yeah. No, they're not. That one's got the lens cap on. I can see it. Oh, that's, uh, that's weird. Watch um, it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we... we, uh, we guys... I don't remember what we watched... You were just so engrossed? Oh, I told you one time we watched uh, a dog's No, but purpose. that wasn't this weekend. No, I know, and she just wept through the whole fucking thing. Why are you going to, like, is, is this is great. I kind of love this, that you and Mary Jean are like friendship daters. I wouldn't even say it's daters. Well, you she, second time. She came over, and uh, what did we do? We just hung, we literally just hung out, and we took a few stupid photos, and then she just left. I, just, I was going to get her an Uber. She won't let me Uber her. Like, if you have a few drinks, I'm like, just fucking Uber home. It's safer. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's like, don't... She's like, oh, I'm fine. She doesn't want to leave her car at your place. I know. You just take a fucking Uber. It's so much safer. Does she drive there? Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, maybe she was She was fine, but... I'm trying yeah, to think but if still, we, we watch... Oh, you know what? I was I watching saw UFC. I was watching UFC. I saw canoodling, though. Uh, yeah, it was just for the pictures. Honestly, it was a, there was nothing... Wow. Nothing fresh happening. Just your UFC companion. Yeah, and for I... For the would, evening. And I don't get sex vibes from her. Like, she just... I think she likes hanging out with me. And, and I don't know... If I would, even if we could, to be honest. Not that she's not sexy, but it's just, it's fun hanging out with her. And like, I like her on the show. Yeah, I love her on the I know show. That sounds, I, I know that sounds, she would still come back. Yeah. I mean, I believe you. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Cause I, I know, know it sounds crazy, but, but I'm a weird guy. That's what people don't, I think people don't understand your weirdness fully. Like I know that part of your weirdness is that sometimes you just don't do anything. Yeah. Like you're not the guy who's constantly you're constantly chasing sex, but then sometimes there are women that you're just like, we're just hanging. Yeah. I'm, I don't need it. I'm fine just hanging with certain women. Like, not that I don't, like, yeah, not that I wouldn't, but th- it would have to be, uh, it would have to be correct. It would have to feel right. I can't right. just do it. She'd have to be your girlfriend at this point. Well, no, but I mean, I'm at that. But I kind of do want, I'm debating a girlfriend at this point. What's the debate? If I can find one who will be my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I've well, been single for too long, man. I'm a little tired of it. But you know, I mean, I told you before, but you know that you have to change your habits now. I know what we watched. This is okay. That's that. That picture just tipped it off. We were watching this. We were watching okay. a documentary on pedophilia. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes, because I was joking, saying, "Oh no, the reflection of what we're watching is going to be in the in the window." That just reminded me. We were watching a documentary. Where'd you find it? We couldn't find. Me- oh yeah, this. Okay, I now I remember. You made it. <laughs> We could made it. <laughs> no, I didn't. Oh, sorry. <laughs> he gets it. He's lost. He gets it. Somebody reading happy endings. Yeah, no, no, I didn't. Uh, it, it, we were watching, trying to find a bad horror movie. Remember, I talked yesterday to yeah. Danny McBride. It was with Mary Jane. We were trying to find a, a, a bad horror movie to watch, something horrible. And Netflix has no more rating system, so we, we didn't tell what could tell what the worst ones were. So we finally found a horror movie. We, we were flipped through a couple, but they were bad in a way that wasn't even fun to watch. We wanted something kind of scary, too. And then we saw this documentary on pedophilia, and it was done in Britain. So they kept saying pedophilia and pedophiles. And it was an interesting documentary on the, this woman's take, which, of course, is, it's terrible. But she was saying that we should listen to them more and have more empathy what? to try to get them before they offend. Like, try to get pedophiles before they go out and offend, because this way they'll be okay getting... It made sense what she said, this way they're not out hurting kids. So were you just trying to get Mary Jean to be, like, more on your side? Like, oh, yeah, what she... I mean, it makes sense what she's saying, doesn't it? Yeah, and I tried to get her to put on... To, to dress me up in my little, uh, my Angus Young outfit. <laughs> uh, I wanted to wear my little Angus Young shorts and my schoolboy hat. I'm very hungry. I can't eat, though. Why? Cooper's talking, but I'm feeling nauseous. Oh. I'm so hungry. I didn't have my eggs this morning. 
I feel like you just were like in the middle of the story. I just you're realized, just like, like, you ever I, almost vomit while you're talking? No, I sure you have control of myself. No, you don't. Just eat. Sam will talk. Yeah, you yeah get a couple quick bites. You're there's done. two of us. Quick, I know, I know, I know. And Ricky's on his way. So. Where is he? He's. Roland said he's coming to us soon. Oh, he's in the elevator anymore but i i didn't stop anything i i still took in like two and a half thousand calories and i drink every night is this uh, after you were successful that you had this almost yeah, stroke yeah okay. 48 yeah so um and i and I, I lost weight i lost about 25 pounds and that was it right um but now i still eat and drink too much but i physically can't work out enough yeah. the next day because i'm getting old and my <laughs> so so i'm steadily getting fatter and um, i suppose i put 10 of the pounds back on and so I said to people, right, this is slippery slope, fat shame me. And they were, they were sending in tweets to me. It's hard, it's hard to keep it off because I've also lost weight, so I know oh, you. you were a fat little thing, weren't you? I was a pig. Oh, yeah. I was well, a pig. Yeah. No, like a little, you, I'll tell you what you like. You like, you know, like a, I, I've always thought of you more of an amphibian or a, a, a reptile <laughs> than a human. You know that, right? <laughs> yes. And you used to be like a fat frog. Do you know what I mean? A disgusting fat frog. And at first I thought, oh my god, this, this guy, I'm going to read about this guy in the next five years, and he's in jail for something horrendous <laughs> that's never been done before. Do you know what I mean? Like, I didn't know this was humanly possible. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know people were capable. Serial killers are, tr are asking him to, to move wings in the in the in the Something prison. that creeps right. even them out. Yeah, exactly, right. yeah. yeah. And then he, he... How did you get fit? Same way you did. I just got sick of it, and I started eating better in the gym, and I wish I had a better reason. That was it. I just started working out and, and just being aware of it. But the hardest part is when you put five pounds back on, which everyone does. We all yeah. fucking do it. It's it's stopping the bleeding and going, okay, just stop. It, it, yeah. always, there's always that addict thinking, like, oh, fuck it. I've already blown it. Let me yeah. The well, hardest my, part my, is stopping. Mine is, is still sort of stubbornness because I did it all without giving anything up, and that's getting harder now. Yeah. So, I, as I say, I physically can't work out like Rocky anymore yeah. because I ache. I ache <laughs> and, you know, also your metabolism goes down when you get older. There's still no excuse. Right. It's still a simple, it's still simple yeah. science. If you take in more calories than you burn off, you put on weight. It's as simple as that, right? What are you eating? If you're not eating meat anymore, what are you eating that's putting on weight? Like, what are you binge well, on? Well, I, st I st um, you know, I still eat, you know, bread and pasta and cheese and all those things. I'm pretty healthy, you know. I, 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 I try and eat protein. I do all that, but then I have a bottle of wine every night you right. know it's just like that's sugar five, right five, a lot five, of sugar. yeah 36 um uh spoonfuls of sugar in a bottle of wine apparently so it's the craziest waste of calories right but it's wine it's alcohol it's worth it, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's worth it. <laughs> makes you feel good i know yeah yeah i don't care after the second bottle of wine, i don't care that i'm fat anymore <laughs> <laughs> that's the real cure exactly, you yeah. don't look fat though uh, you don't look fat i think you I'm look good this way seriously I, luckily i didn't throw away all my big black t-shirts <laughs> <laughs> the, the trick is to start drinking wine during the day and then that way during the burn day you off. won't notice that you're fatty and you burn it off more don't you because you're staggering around drunk uh, which yeah. burns calories but that's, that's i just figured you'd be too drunk to realize that you're it, fat during the day because you the, it's the yeah it's the um the hobo plan <laughs> yeah. you, you drink but you walk the streets and that, that burns a lot of calories <laughs> but the hard part is <laughs> wander aimlessly and to be, burn calories and shouting and swearing and kicking boxes that right. uses 200 <laughs> yeah. calories an hour you clench the core when you yell yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. When you put on a shirt that used to fit, like you start to notice it's a slow thing too. Like you put on, like you have, I have size ones and size zeros and I threw out a lot of my ones. I'm like, no, you're not going to give these to grow back into. You're going to feel it if you start fattening up again. You mean size yeah. one and zeros of what? I thought only dresses come in size zero and size one and so well, we all have our lifestyle choices. <laughs> 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 like men's clothes don't right. come in yeah, size yeah. zero and size yeah. one. No, they do. These t-shirts they wear, it's very fancy what? brand. Yeah. But they're one and zero and I wore the zeros and they fit me. But then after like a few few weeks of being shitty, like after I shot my special in December, but then, you know, you shoot, you reward yourself a little, and then you start putting it on, and you feel it grips the side. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, it's real yeah. light, and it's real light, and then the next time, it just grips the under the titty a little bit, <laughs> and it starts, and before you know it, you have to go to size one. Well, so. if, if you're referring to yourself as having titties, you yes, know, I am. It's, 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 you know, something's wrong immediately. Right. Can yeah. I tell you one time, I had a girl <laughs> say that to me. She called my chest tits. She, uh. she was being degrading, and uh, she licked my nipples and it drove me crazy and she's like oh you like your titties licked and I went, I went crazy it was so humiliating you liked it because it was yeah. even it was more so humiliating, humiliating. Yeah, yeah she called me uh, tits this, this, this conversation's uh, 
had gone downhill pretty quickly. That, was, really that quick. was from naught to 60, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. The nice thing about health. And right. then he went, once this girl was degrading me. <laughs> well, that's why that YouTube, that's why the, uh, the Netflix trailer works. Because that is, <laughs> that is where it goes. Imagine, imagine Charlie Rose just going, oh, that reminds me of a, a very funny thing that happened to me yesterday. <laughs> yeah, Charlie Rose starts going, it's like when you get pissed on, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Charlie, like, what are we doing? I'll bet you he does. I'll bet you he lays down with his mouth open and goes, oh, make the rose grow. <laughs> make the rose grow. <laughs> make the rose grow. Yeah. Right, okay. Uh, that, that is libelous and we have no information. Oh, it was just a guess. Yeah, it was just a, you're allowed to guess. It's you're Charlie, Rose, guess. Charlie Rose. Charlie Rose theories. <laughs> I tell you one thing. If even Charlie Rose did sue me, the funny part, it would be worth getting sued for just to have the deposition. Uh, he'd, have to, in court. he'd have to explain. <laughs> the, the, the judge is reading out and he said, he says, Mr. Norton, why are you masturbating? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rose, Read it slower. Read it slower. <laughs> have you ever been urinated? No, I've never been urinated. I, we'd ha- oh, we'd have to call in people he slept yeah. with. It'd be well worth it. Has he ever said to you, make the rose grow? <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, that would be well worth it. I think so. But when I, when I was sort of losing weight, uh, I think it, it, I lost the weight. And I, I lost 25 pounds in about like six months, just really going for it. And it was between the first two goals golden globes i did um uh and i remember uh the suits i sort of had i'd take into the sort of dry cleaners and repair shop and take an inch in that took me in again took another inch in it was great and then when i got back <laughs> again i'm i'm too embarrassed to take it back and go take the inch out again you know, <laughs> right. so they're just in my wardrobe all these two. it's a varying sizes of these suits because like, now it's time to buy new suits because you're know. not going to have them taken That's out the most depressing thing about clothes yeah when, when you have to buy new ones how good does it feel when you can go shopping and then like all of a sudden things that like because shopping is always a nightmare because the I sizes anyway, though it's humiliating I, was, I mean i was i was i was happy that i was sort of fitter and you know things fit me and i wasn't sweating so much but <laughs> i've never I, i've never really cared about that i've never i gave that up at 28 pretending about fashion or looking good or i just want comfort i'd be happy you know you know, I'm, I'm in jeans now, which is a bit of a pain to me. I'd rather be here in my pajamas. In fact, I'd rather be in a bucket full of my own <laughs> shit and urine. Just right. being, being fed by, red wine by a nurse and then she empties the bucket. Right. Oh, that's another one of Jim's things he yeah. does. You like that? Yeah. 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 I like to be that. Caligula fed wine. <laughs> and my stomach stabbed. Like a foie gras goose. Just there. <laughs> Unbelievable. So yeah, that's, um, and that's also, it's, it's so relative. You're not going to see me on one of those documentaries anytime soon being airlifted to hospital but <laughs> do you right. know what I mean there's it's a it. big there's a there's a big gap yeah oh it's a huge it's a huge gap yeah I'm uh but you get addicted to the compliments too. You get addicted to people going, "Hey, you look good," and like all of a sudden that became a motivator. People who don't see you for a while. I told you when Ozzy came in, and I didn't. I really, it's the truth. I didn't think he knew who I was. I had interviewed him fifty times, but he would never. And then he remembered me and realized I'd lost weight. That 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 motivated me for three years. The fact yeah. that he recognized I lost yeah, weight. There's always, there's always someone on Twitter that says, "Oh, you look better, fat." <laughs> oh, please. Yeah. What? Yeah. Well, yeah, you're a bit haggard now. That yeah. skin looks a bit. You know. Do you know how many AIDS accusations I've gotten on Twitter? <laughs> oh, so said so that to me yeah, it looks ill it yeah. looks ill well I can't win <laughs> no. what do you want or what? the or like or or the minute like you show a photo of yourself skinny didn't you used to be funny you yeah. were oh, funny when you were fat, fat. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I expect you to die of a heart attack because <laughs> yeah so you're not a, uh, that's ridiculous That's a, it's a myth as well it's and they don't, re- they don't really we hate ourselves as much now as before just for different reasons well, myself I didn't on. care I didn't particularly care I wasn't there wasn't going oh my god I'm go- I, I enjoyed I enjoyed food more than being healthy it's as simple as that it was a life choice though it was never I didn't have any excuses, but I, I, I don't remember being that worried about it. I what's the hardest eat? thing for you to not I, eat? What's the hardest thing for you? Like, what's the like? What's the food that you're like? Fuck! I can't not eat this. I mean, because I'm in here, the first thing I thought of saying was cock. <laughs> Just because you asked me it, I know. I, I understand. Be a funny answer, and I thought Jim had the same answer. <laughs> <laughs> Anywhere else, I would ne- that would never pop into my head <laughs> to say, "Oh, it'd be funny to say cock," because it's Jim asking the question. <laughs> Charlie Rose. So, Ricky, what's the uh, what's the one thing you can resist eating? Cock. Oh. Okay, cut there. Can we cut there? <laughs> no, so we all know those. Charlie. He'd go, "I hear you." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> theories, theories about Charlie Rose. <laughs> <laughs> I would love um, to see Hoda's I, face if Hoda was like <laughs> Ricky. <laughs> Stop talking about people I know and I might have to work with again. And then, then you're like, well, Hoda, mainly cock. 
<laughs> she would probably laugh at that, though. They seem like they don't yeah, they drink they wine on their show. They're drunk half the time. On NBC. No, you can't that's say true. Coke unless you're talking about a male chicken. Right. Then you could say it. Then, yeah. Well, that's what um, I was talking about, Hoda. Male chicken. I don't like the female <laughs> exactly, chickens. They don't yeah. taste as good. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, what was I saying? The, hard, the before, hardest food for you not to eat. How much you like to eat cock? Well, the hardest food to give up is obviously it would be any alcohol. That's not strictly a food. Um... Uh, I like, I like, um, I like savoury things. I like what everyone likes because we're mammals. I like, I like fatty, salty foods. I like, do you know what I mean? Cheeses and, and pastas and things like that. I, that I, I don't think that that's to be the hardest thing. And, and I cut down on it. Um, does yeah. your green room have a lot of stuff in it? Like on the on the road, I had that pretzels taken out of my rider. Literally, Ken, my road manager would pretzels. hide the pretzels. Yeah, they no, sent me on that's binges. The thing. When that's the other thing as well. That when you graze, when there's things out, when there's like bag, b- bowls of crisp out, you eat you eat ridiculously nine bags of crisp. You wouldn't open nine bags of right. crisps and eat them at home. Um, so I do little tricks. So I've got protein crisps now, um, which is they they taste just like crisp, but they're right. they're uh, they're like a whey. But, um, so it's not, it's not potato. It's not as bad. Yeah, so it's like 100 calories instead of 200. So I do, you do little tricks like that. And, um, uh, I suppose I, I try and have a, a proper meal. I try and have like protein and vegetable, but I've still got the palate of a five. Deep down, we're yeah. all the same, you know. I, 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 I'd eat, if, if someone said we've just found a way pizza isn't fattening, I'd eat pizza all day. It's literally all I would eat. Of course. So good. Is there of anything course. better than tasty delight? I love giving yes. myself a little treat. Tasty delight is fucking rules. What's tasty delight? It's like a frozen, frozen yogurt. Fro- there's yo. lots of things better than frozen yogurt. No, there's yogurt. not. Yeah, there are. There's many things better yeah. than frozen yogurt. Ice cream yogurt. ball, I can't have ice cream, it's too much. Ice cream, oh, pudding. <laughs> puddings are great. Yeah, pudding I Pudding rules. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> pudding rules! <laughs> yeah, I always try to work what the euphemism is, when I'm talking to him, like right. pudding rules. That's Where are we going a, here? No, we're, we're in prison. What would that mean? <laughs> <laughs> who, who wants pudding means something else in gym, in gym talk. You know? right. Charlie Rose pops in around the corner. Did someone say pudding? <laughs> when, when Charlie Rose and Jim get together, you got to be careful what you say yes to. <laughs> Hey, how's your tour going, by the way? The, really, Ricky's promoting one. the Humanity World Tour and RickyGervais.com. Most of it is sold out across the, uh, the, the Yeah, the globe. Well, we're, but it, uh, we're putting two new dates on, and they'll be the last two dates. Um, uh, uh, another one in New York um, in October, which goes on sale this this Friday at 10 a.m. Um, and uh, also another one at the Dolby Theatre, the third one at the Dolby Theatre. In Los Angeles, in, right? In L.A., yeah, exactly. And that goes on sale at 10 a.m. in L.A. this Friday. So they're the last, they're the last two um, to go on. And, yeah, pretty much everything else is uh, uh, sold out s- straight away. And I've heard it's fast. an amazing tour. I have re- amazing reviews. Everyone is saying yeah. it's great. It's really going well. It, it's, it's gone the best of any tour I've ever done, I think. Um and I've enjoyed it more. I really, en- I really enjoy being a stand-up now. I think I'm a stand-up for the first time. Really? Yeah. I, I think I know that sounds odd, um, but I, I had seven years off, so the anticipation was good. I worked on it for a long time and thought about it for a long time, so it's, it is, I think, objectively better. But I think, I think more it's about the attitude and the way I approached it. Um, my first four, I felt that I wrote them. I wrote, like an Edinburgh show, you know, I wrote a themed show, and then I went out and, and practiced it. Almost like an actor playing a stand-up, yeah. I feel. Like they were more like one-man shows than stand-up They were more like one-man shows, and this I've stripped it down. It's me, I walk out in a you know, pair of jeans and a black T-shirt, and I just talk to them. And I did more warm-ups than I ever did before, and I did it by walking out and just talking to them. I didn't have a... I had the title, and I had some things to talk to them, and, it, and I made sure... That there were no expectations, you know, that uh, I haven't got anything, you know, and I just talked. And honestly, it's, it just feels better. And I do, I do, I think I can call myself a stand up for the, for the first time. Right. Well, I think the thing with you, I saw you years ago do stand up. And what was impressive about it is you were very comfortable and natural on stage. You, like a lot of guys who just start stand up or who are only a few years in have a certain performance way. <clears throat> and you were much more natural than I was, even way farther along in. So you had that going for you as a comic. You were very comfortable just talking to an audience. I, I've always felt that though. I've always felt that I could talk to it. I mean, if, even if it was like a, crowd of mates in a pub or do you know what I mean yeah. I've, always, I've always done it I don't think it was natural I think that I'd been practicing my art for 40 years without realizing it was a job do you know right. what I mean yeah yeah um and I, also when I approached stand up my m- my uh my mission statement was to try and be as funny as you are in the pub do you know what I mean yeah 
Right. So I didn't want it to be too, you know, uh, tricksy or uh, I played a slight persona because I always do that anyway. I do that. We, we, sure. we do that here, you know. So, yeah. you know, it was saying the wrong thing for comic effect or yeah. being naughty or trying to get people to laugh at things they didn't know they could. And yeah. I've always doubted Taboo for that reason because I think it's more exciting. Sure. You want to take the audience to a place it hasn't been before. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and, the, so, and get them to laugh at things they didn't think they would enjoy. Exactly. And this show is all about that. It's all about, you know, um, there are no bad subjects for jokes. It depends what the joke is. You know, we've talked about this a yeah. lot. You know, and uh, and I, I talk about the most taboo subjects, and I discuss them, and then give an example of the joke. And by the end, they're cracking up, and they're knowing they get it. They sort of get, oh yeah. If I if you start off with a joke in that subject, it's oh, why has he done that? Because they don't know where you're coming from. And that's the other thing about this tour. Um, people know me now, so they know what I'm doing. Do, do, do you know what I'm yes, saying? Like absolutely. a friend, like a mate knows you don't mean it. Th these five thousand strangers every night. No, I don't mean it. Right? Do you know they? Yeah. They. 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 So they know what they're in for. They know what they're to not expect. They're in for, and they they love it. And uh, it's almost like they're going, "Oh, he's always done this, but I I don't think we quite got it before." Right. Um, we can't get. You are the few A list celebrities. I'm going to say A list celebrities who doesn't back off when you're criticized for a joke, which I love. Yeah. You never back off when you're joking about something and people are like, I don't like that. You, you basically tell them, all right, well, then don't follow me. You don't have to like it. Or if they're insulting, you're insulting. Like, you handle yeah. it really well. Well, I think that's because I can justify it. I, I, I'm not one of these I'm not one of these comedians who goes, oh, it was just a joke. Because, I, I, you know, I, do, I don't really do that. I, I think that I think it has to stand up on its own, you know, comedic legs. Um and I talk about this, that, you know, offence is often um, caused when people mistake the subject of a joke with the target. They don't look at the joke. They just, they just, they've been told this ridiculous dogma that some subjects shouldn't be joked about, which is, which is a nonsense. Um, and I get asked, is there anything you won't joke about? And I think, well, you're a journalist. Is there anything you won't write about? Right, right. It depends what you write. And it's funny, because whenever I've done a joke uh, about a really contentious subject or, you know, and it's discussed on the radio the next day, I'm going, but you're talking about it. Yeah. You're talking about it. Because they assume I'm coming it from the wrong direction. Well, they because, assume that I'm... Sure. They assume I'm punching down and they assume I'm making fun of whatever the victim is in this joke. Right. Which isn't true. Because a joke about someone, it doesn't have to be pro or anti. It can be either. It can sure. be neither. It can punch nowhere. It can be a pun. Right. You know? It, right. It, 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 it doesn't... It, so, it, every... You have to take every single joke on its merit. And I got... I recently got... And again, you can't... I, I, I've talked about this on the show before, but I was recently on, on Twitter, I did a Caitlyn Jenner joke, which wasn't even nasty, and I was a, accused by a bunch of people of being transphobic. Right. This is... At least 15 minutes in my new... Uh, this is uh, 15 minutes in my new stand-up about... And not uh, even about that. And, and, and oh, I, I talk about it in my... Spe I got accused of being transphobic, and it was like, wow, you really have no idea who you're talking about, do well, you? Well, exactly. I mean, the, yeah, they picked on the wrong person there. But I did <laughs> yeah. a joke at the Golden Globes, and they were saying it was transphobic. And I said, why? And they said it was about a trans person. I said, well, that's like saying a joke about Bill Cosby is racist. Right. It right. depends what the joke is. It wasn't transphobic at all. It, you know, um, the, jo the joke I uh, told at the Golden Globes, I came out... And I said, um, uh, uh, all the actors are looking at me all nervously, brilliant. And I said, um, relax, I'm going to be nice tonight. I've changed. Not as much as Bruce Jenner. That's obviously. funny. And I go, now Caitlyn Jenner, and what a year she's had, became a role model for trans people everywhere, bravely breaking down barriers and destroying stereotypes. She didn't do a lot for women drivers. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, the subject of that joke is clearly stereotypes. And, 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 and yeah. by the way, like... The most, the thing that people should even, if they're going to take umbrage with something, it should be like, wait a minute, wasn't that a thing? Somebody died in that car accident that he's referencing. Yeah. But nobody even picks up on no, that. No, I, I discuss it. I say, let, let's not forget the target of the joke is yeah. a celebrity killing someone in their car. Yeah. And yeah. they also said you dead named, uh, Travis reminded me that you dead named. That's it, you I said talk about Bruce. that as well. Dead name, which is ever saying that, uh, uh, her, her old name and that she used to be a, a man. Yeah. And then I say, but she was. I, and I do it, the thing about she was in the Olympic Games and I act out. You know, and so, and but, and I say, you know, and I, and I, and and I was second, you know, my second crime was um, uh, saying that uh, he'd changed because they say, the, you know, people, that she hasn't changed, that she's always identified as a woman, and so that, you know, she had trans uh, in a g uh, gender realignment, and I discuss it uh, in the life. I discuss all the criticism of me, and then I say my piece because I, I, I think it can be funny to deconstruct, particularly when you're the butt of the joke or you're, you know. Um, and so I do, I always try and 
keep it fair. I don't, I don't ever do a sleight of hand where I, I say something that's a lie or to make myself look better in a joke. Right. You know, I, I think that's really important. I think that, and then you, once you've done your best and you've explained it well, people are still going to make their own mind. They don't have to like it. They don't even have to get it. But someone not getting your joke isn't your problem. It's theirs. Right. right. They always say, oh, sorry, no, no, go ahead. they always say like, well, you should tell a joke that people, your joke should be better and say, why is there never any responsibility on the fucking, the idiot with ears that took it wrong? <laughs> brilliant. Yeah. Why is exactly. always that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Why isn't it your responsibility to get the fucking joke? Yeah. That's a great, and the other thing I get is when, whenever, like in in the in the press, a joke of mine is discussed as being offensive. I don't mind that at all. But when they get the fucking joke wrong, that drives me mad. I go, well, no, that's not the fucking <laughs> joke I said. That isn't a good joke. A, a joke is is should be perfect. Every word matters. It's like a cryptic crossword clue. Every word matters. It's a little piece of poetry. Right? So if you get one of those things wrong, you can fuck the whole joke. So instead you have a news anchor paraphrasing and going, well, what he was pretty much saying was, and you're like, no! Yeah. No! Well, I do, I do, I did a, I did a joke, um, uh, years ago. I, I say, um, uh, um, uh, I, uh, I hate, I, I hate drink driving. I think it's terrible. I was grew up when it was in a stigma, but now it's terrible. And by the way, I don't even drive, so this joke's, everyone knows. I say, um, uh, I did it once, I took the car out and I was drunk one Christmas, um, but I learnt my lesson because I nearly killed an old lady. And then I go, in the end, I didn't kill her. In the end, I just raped her. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, jo the joke there is clearly the magic act with nearly killed. It's so I, nearly, I swerved and nearly killed her. But what I actually meant were I uh, attacked her so much that she nearly died from her rent. And, and it turns out worse, right? Yeah. Much worse. So, they're discussing that joke. It was terrible, right? So, in the paper, <laughs> they tell the joke as this. They tell the joke as this. Um, I went out and I nearly killed an old lady. In the end, I didn't kill her, I just raped her. So I don't tell anything about the drink driving bit. The whole setup it. is gone. So it's, they just think, well, he's a maniac. He yeah. said what? He went out and nearly killed no lady, but just raped her. Well, that's, that's mental. Not joke. That's not even a fucking joke. <laughs> I know, exactly. He's just confessing to crimes. I'm yeah, saying, yeah, yeah. Arrest him. Yeah. That's so, a, that really made me laugh. That was really yeah. fucking it's funny. Clever. It's clever. It's, 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 and I say everything matters. And, it, and, and live, I even do the, the, you know, the, the mime of the steering wheel going, right. I nearly yeah. killed no lady. And so that's planted firmly in their head. And then, you know, the, the, the surprise at the end, well, you know. It's the ultimate misdirect, and I hate to break it down like that, but that's really what, it, sometimes it's a misdirection where you, I didn't even do this, and then what you've done is more barbaric or worse, but, and that's what the joke, the joke isn't about a rape, it's about doing something even worse where you're trying to admonish yourself, I didn't do anything wrong, and then you've done something of worse. Well, that's exactly, that's exactly, and also, um, uh, uh, we've discussed this before, when people say, oh, you think, you think rape's funny, and they mean jokes about rape, but they're, they've, done that little sleight of hand on purpose to make you back yourself into a corner like you do you think rape's funny the answer's no of course not. no one finds fucking rape funny and i do this live as well i say not even rapists find rape funny there's no there's never a case of someone giving evidence going it was dark he was wearing a ski mask and he was giggling <laughs> so but 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 they they try and the answer is again it depends on the joke i right. just I, you know i really break it down it, it's it's um, it's so much fun. It's such a great platform to be able to put your side forward and, and discuss humour in a in a funny way. And so that you're, you're taking them along with you all the way. You're explaining. They're hearing every word right. from your side, and then you know. And it, 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 it takes a long time to explain what humour is to someone if they or, or freedom of speech. Or it's it's we've talked about it on the show. It's crazy that we've gotten to a point where you have to show how the trick is done. Like as a comedian, you have to pull the curtain back. There can't be any more fourth wall. Like you have to take them behind the scenes yeah. and say, "This is what I did. This is my intention. This is why I put this here." Like you shouldn't but, have you know, to. Well, no, you shouldn't have to. But the, but the, this is the reason is the more in, the more terrible and emotive the subject, the harder it is to get over the hump about a joke about it. Right? Yeah, we can joke about you know people joke about murder and people get it. They go murder, uh, you know, uh, which is horrendous murder. But they but they they can't take that personally because they haven't personally been murdered. Do you know what I mean? Whereas, right. uh, if you do, do, do something that, that touches someone or a group of people and it's, you know, uh, it's very, very emotive, it's hard for them to get over that. The number of times um, people have seen my stand-up and I've had one complaint. Um, uh, I did, the first time I played Madison Square Garden, uh, I got a complaint from a, a Jewish society saying, we loved the show, we loved all this, uh, we, w we weren't, uh, we were 
however unhappy about a routine about Anne Frank. And they tell me, it's like, I said, we, but you got the jokes about famine and cancer sure. and AIDS. Right. And you got those. You know, I said, I'm doing the same thing with her as I did with those things. I'm saying the wrong thing. And they went, Oh yes, we yes okay we understand it. <laughs> and sometimes, but sometimes it, you do need that, and I don't sure. I don't begrudge people um, for not, that. But because because they're not attuned, we, we think about these things every day. A, a, a thirty second joke, we have probably put three hours work into it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or thought yeah. about it, or introspected, or so um, we are presenting them with a finished item. But that's the tip of the iceberg, and so sometimes they do have to get over there. It's hard to, by definition. To, to, to see your own blind spot, because everyone's got their thing they don't want to joke about. People think that, people say things, are you ever offended by things? I go, I'm offended every day. I'm offended by loads of things. You know, it's not, I'm not immune to being offended. You just don't want a penalty imposed. Well, if you're exactly, offended. yeah, yeah. I, I, you avoid I, the things you're offended yeah, by. Yeah, that's the other thing about today. People think that they have the right, because they don't want to hear something bad, that it's their right to shut you up, as opposed to it's their right not to listen. And that's the confusion as well. I think going back to, to your point that you originally made about Ricky being one of the only people on his level to stand up for himself, right? To not apologize for everything not be and, to, by, and yeah. to stick by what you say. Do you think that that's partly or I'd say fully because you're aware of your ability to create, meaning you're not really beholden to anything well, because it's not, you're, no, it's you not can that create I think, your own material? No, it's not that I think I'm bulletproof or I don't care or they can't do anything about it. Um, although the, all those things are true, um, <laughs> no, no, if I'm not if I'm not breaking the law and they're not coming to my house, who cares? It's virtual, right, you know. Yeah. Um, it's not that; it's that I'm confident in the, that I've done right. I don't think I've done a really bad thing and I can get away with it. Fuck you. I think no, I've done a right thing here. I can stand. I justify every right. one of my jokes as a, as as an okay thing to do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I'm not, I'm not saying, because that doesn't make sense. I can't say, yeah, I do bad things, but uh, so what? Mm. That, I, I wouldn't do them if I thought they were bad things. So I, 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 I'm disagreeing with them that what I've done is a bad thing. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, totally. And I you... try and get across to people that jokes about a bad thing isn't the same as the actual bad thing. It's not even condoning the bad thing. It could be anti the bad thing. Otherwise, we wouldn't have satire and irony. So you, you do see so many people, though, and I think that's what you were talking about, Jim, who, like, will, even though you can tell they don't believe it, go, you know, at first this wasn't my intention, but I saw it from your perspective, and the apologies come out, and they're just trying to get the bad story away, get the bad story away. Yeah, well, so I think sometimes, uh, it's, it, it depends. Some people are just trolls. Some people just want to ruin your day. They get in the way. They jump in the way of a bullet and say, why are you shooting at me? Yeah, and, and people so, love to be martyrs. Oh, they yeah. think everything's personal. I don't even know they're following me. I don't know these people. I'm just tweeting. And they take it, they take it personally. They go, why are you tweeting? I'm not tweeting you. You're, you've you've come to my house, knocked on my door, and said, "Why, why are you yeah. talking to me?" <laughs> well, I'm not. <laughs> so, uh, again, people, and it's hard because people think that the world revolves around them. Do you know there's been people who've said things on Twitter that annoyed me a lot? Yeah, of course. And and there are people who've made statements publicly, and I've stopped myself from responding because I realize, and I really practice. I'm like, they're not talking to you. You're not following them. Yeah, you call yeah. them. What the fuck business is it in mind what they say on Twitter? I've actually, I, I get the instinct to want to tell someone to go fuck themselves because what they say, but I've backed off on doing. It. I'm like, yeah, they weren't no, talking to me. I only get that when they've they've added me and they've misunderstood something right. I've said, and it's, yeah. and it's aggressive, and you know, yeah. Um, and they make assumptions. They make assumptions about you that are wrong, and then they go, hypocrite. I go, well, no, the assumption's wrong. So are you going to take back the hypocrite bit now? Right. You, you, you know, but I, again, I, the best thing is to ignore it. Because you're right. It's one It's one idiot in his basement. And it goes not, away. It does go that, away in a couple of days. amazing that it go, it go, it, you ignore it? It was consu you consumes you, it consumes you. And then it just disappears. It does, it does, it's, it's virtual. Yeah. It's virtual. It's like a bad dream. As I say, if they're not coming to your house and you haven't broken the law, it, 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 yeah, forget it. Were you surprised when you when you posted that photo? Because you'll post photos of the big game hunters and stuff that will hunt and then say sarcastic things about them. But, like, recently oh, you posted that photo giraffe. of the giraffe right. and, and a bunch of people thought you were posting a photo of yourself yeah. killing so a giraffe this, and bragging so about this, it. So there's this fat idiot in a fucking pith helmet, right, with a rifle standing on a giraffe's neck, right, grinning, right? And I said, yay, I just shot um, a slow-moving 14-foot 
herbivore with a, <laughs> with a high velocity rifle. Right? And then to, and most people got it, but most people were going, Why'd you do that? No, it's not <laughs> me, is it? It's not me. Because it was like a wide <laughs> shot. No, yeah. <laughs> people yeah. were seriously like, that's not cool, right? And yeah. like you would actually phrase it that way if it was you. Like who would say like I've just shot a slow moving herbivore? You yeah. would never say that if it was no, you. Exactly. Or, no. And also the other thing is and I looked at the people that object and they don't follow me, so they don't right. know anything about me. So it's obviously been RT'd onto their their uh, timeline. Their timelines. <laughs> so I just ignore it. I just yeah. ignore it. But, but um, you do, you do, and, and then it shocks you to realize that maybe there's some people on Twitter that don't know what the word herbivore means. Well, uh, that's the other <laughs> thing as well. Um, stupidity. Uh, I, I can't get over. I can't get over how stupid some people are. <laughs> Willfully, I mean ignorance. That people are happy with their their anger. Yeah. And it's based yeah. on nothing. It's it's based on a falsehood. And that's the thing about stupid people they're very confident because they don't know they're stupid they have no right. idea yeah right yeah uh, what's that what's that effect the something kruger effect that more stupid the more arrogant you are because you've built a a sort of uh, a delusionary wall around yourself to protect your thoughts and ideas uh, um uh and it's a, it's fun it's fascinating that uh, uh, stupid people are very arrogant because yeah because they don't they, know any better because they they miss the bit of the brain that Tells them they're wrong. Right. So it's the self sort of. So yeah, there's nothing telling me I'm wrong. I must be right. You must be right, and and everyone's wrong because I know I'm right. Right. I know I'm right because I'm so smart. The narcissist. <laughs> I'm so stupid. I don't know that I'm fucking stupid. Right. Yeah. So it, it's a lovely. It's <laughs> so there's, uh, you know. They are the most hateable people too. They have a blinding narcissism. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they're stupid, and they're they're so hateable. But the joy in it is, and here's the little asterisk that makes me smile: is they're miserable because they don't know why everybody hates them. Yeah. And that's kind kind of fun. Because yeah. like, they're not going to stop doing what they're doing, so they're going to continue self-destructing and continue yeah, I think self-sabotaging. So. I, always, I think that. If, someone's, if I see someone hateful or stupid on Twitter, all I do is I look down their timeline about what they're tweeting about and and what, well, what's in their bio, and I think about retweeting it, and some I do, but then I start feeling sorry for them immediately. Yeah. I think, oh my God, this guy's got no life at all. Why this would is I, all he does. Why would I ruin his day more by retweeting him? And it's sort of, it's like, I get very Buddhist. You know I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because you, you know, they, they are, they, they are losers, yeah. They, they are. are, but what's, what's, what's better than a video? Boxer confronts troll. I love it. <laughs> I, I, honestly, I went down the YouTube wor wormhole of instant karma and bully gets owned. <laughs> I know. I I watched those. There's someone by bloke being. There's one. There's one that's at a party, uh, and it's like they're like a bunch of posh kids, like twenty year olds or something. And, and this one's got a guy. And he's going, "Fuck you, dude. Fuck you, motherfucker. Come on, come at me. Come at me." And he's doing this. I go, "What are you doing?" He's going, "Come at me." He goes, Fuck. And the bloke just just poked him in the throat, and he goes, "Sorry." <laughs> 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 there's, there's nothing better than seeing a little kid with a giant backpack on getting shoved and shoved and shoved and then he just I know. cold cocks him and knocks yeah, the guy out it. flat I always love the guy that when the bully picks on like a nerd who's like a black belt yeah. he's like a ninja he drops, he drops the knapsack and he knows yeah. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and you're like oh fuck yeah yeah it's good and, <laughs> and drunks Sorry. get knocked out so easily easy they're, they're, they're unconscious on their feet it's great but yeah yeah it's scary to watch though because you realize how many people out there like could knock you out like when a drunk is going like come on come on and you're like that guy would frighten me if i was out and then yeah. he gets knocked out easily i'm like i don't even know how i'd bluff my way out of something because i would yeah. try to be uh, like you know loud and and and, and i bluff my way out of it but i'd wind up getting knocked out so this is i just don't talk shit well, uh, that, well that's that's the answer isn't it don't, <laughs> don't, don't talk shit you know there's the but i, I these people again they don't think like that and and alcohol Obviously, if you're drunk, it's just nothing you can do about it. Do you get hecklers at any point? I mean, I, no. I, I'll deal with them once in a while, but it's fun heckles. They're not even mean heckles. They'll say you know things what, they you, like. Uh, the thing is, I go out, I've got two spotlights in my face. There's 5,000 people there. If someone shouts something, I didn't hear what he said. Right. So I ignore it. And then people think, oh, he's ignoring heckles. Have you heard? Right. I, I've had some... It's usually... R Ricky, you know, it's not a heckle. Right, it's not, right. You know, no, I don't get heckles and, and they're silent all the way through. Cause I, you create that culture where the, I'm, I'm, it's one way, one way conversation. I, I, I didn't, I never, I never invited that. I don't, I don't do crowd work. I don't really, I never grew up in that, that bear garden where it was fun to get a drunk and put right. him to shame. Cause you don't put him to shame. 
You don't mean to say, he's drunk. They're happy to be part of the show often. They think they're helping. You destroy a heckler and they come up to the bar afterwards and say, oh, that was great. Uh, you know, we did it. No, we didn't do it. No, we, no yeah. you were an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I smashed you and that was not part of it. I, yeah. don't, I don't want to give anyone the satisfaction of being part of this show. Sometimes things happen, though. You get so zoned out, you don't... And I've told this story before, too, but I was at Caroline's one time. And uh, after the show, they're like, did you see what happened? I'm like, no. And a guy had taken out his dick and pissed on the floor in the <laughs> middle of my set. And he was just drunk. He wasn't even being... He was literally sitting there... He wasn't even being sexy for you. Yeah, no, <laughs> not at all. He didn't even try to get my attention. He just didn't want to... He was enjoying the show yeah. so much. Jim was, he was Jim, on the floor. Jim was upset because he didn't get to go out and lick up the puddle. <laughs> no, <laughs> well, I wasn't going to say that, but I did have a picture next to the puddle because I, they, they told me they threw him out. It was a whole thing. I saw none of it on stage, and I have a photo with the puddle. I took a photo with it just so it was a real thing. That's amazing. Sometimes things happen that you have no idea they're happening in the audience. Yeah, no, exactly. Fights. Uh, 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 yeah, that's that's annoying. That, that, I, I was happy though. I was really honored that, that somebody liked my sh- piss. Happened. Piss. That somebody yeah. enjoys you that much. They don't want to leave. Right. That's How true. great is that? I was thinking mean, he didn't want to go to the toilet, so he just he yeah. took it out. He got himself arrested. Because <laughs> he wanted, arrested him. Because he couldn't miss one joke. Yeah, one joke. Not one joke. All right, maybe he was just in a blackout, had no idea where he was. Nah, that's probably, nah, that, that's nah, probably nah, more. Nah. Of that's where great. He put it on your CV. Hey, was Mel Gibson mad at you? By the way, I don't know if I've seen you since then. We might have asked you about that when we interviewed you last in time. Was hall. he pissed off at you or no? I don't know. Maybe. I think. He, I think he was coming into a. You know, I, I think it was difficult for him because, and I don't think he wanted to be there. But he had a film out. You know, it was. It was. He's had a rough ten years. I think he wants to forget it. So sure. I think he did his best to laugh it off. Laugh it off. But um, no, I it, yeah, I think he. I heard in an interview that he was, you know, I don't know if he said that comically. That he, oh yeah, I, I, I wanted to kill him. You know, I think people don't want to be reminded of, of stupid things they've done. That's all. Not in that world. Comedians for the rest of their lives can be shut on for something because for some reason we can handle it. But but a lot of times a guy like that who's not used to being made fun of or yeah. not used to ridicule. Yeah, exactly. Mel Gibson. Of course. Well, it, you know, it, it, yeah, he had a privileged position. The, the fact that he's, you know, the way he spoke to the police officer, th- thinking that how dare you arrest me? Yeah. yeah. Also, I didn't pick up on the worst things he's done. The, the tape with the girlfriend, Jesus, I didn't even, that was too, that's too dark for me to bring up. Do you know what I mean? We right. literally did a year on the radio on those tapes. <laughs> well, exactly. Yeah, I was, I was, I was doing sort of light entertainment ribbing. Yeah. Oh, oh we all get drunk. Uh, well, yeah, we don't say to our girlfriend, do you know what I mean? Sure. It's like, I, I didn't even go to the darkest points of his. Yeah. Um, so it's, you know, but yeah, no one wants to be the butt of a joke, even if it's gentle teasing, because some people get the, the, the they, they, they think they're above it. They think that no one has a right to make fun of me. I've won a, I've won a, an Oscar. And it's by just way, not fucking true. We've you know? talked about your, about the David Brown movie, which was Life on the Road, which was so good. Oh, cheers. The Adam, the, uh, the album. I listen to with no irony. Like I just genuinely love. <laughs> if you don't listen the album. to the lyrics, it's actually a pretty good. Even um, the lyrics are fine. Like even uh, even the lyrics are. I mean, there's a bit of them, uh, some of the lyrics. Occasionally, are <laughs> some of them, yeah, they're good. Don't make fun of the disabled. But yeah, that's <laughs> that's. You go, this is an odd song for Bruce to be singing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's but like, slow. Oh, it's quite Smithy though, isn't it? It's quite Morrissey. Yeah. <laughs> Please don't make fun of the disabled. <laughs> yeah, that could be a Smith song. I right. think. Yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, they were obviously, but you listen to them and there might be one line where you're like, wow, the person singing this is, is seriously is a dope. Like, he'll say one line well, yeah. where you're like, oof. But yeah. like, uh. But Brent means it, exactly. He so means it's a it. sincere album. He thinks it's great. He thinks he's Bruce. John Cougar Mellencamp. He thinks he's Bowie. Slough. Slough. It's Slough. amazing. Slough, you, Slough, you also, like, you probably, cause we, my family lived in England for a few years when I was growing up. And my dad, like, after, when you performed Slough for us live, my dad called me and he was like, do you remember going to Slough? And I was like, no, I don't remember. And he was like, there is nothing going on in yeah, Slough. Yeah, it's sort nothing. of like a concrete sort of jungle, red brick jungle. I think it was built, I think it was built as a sort of town to have working class people, you know, moved out of London and start up like industry and stuff. It but was he's like, like a- this is not, this. Is, like nobody would write a song about well, that's the, that's the joke, you know. Is he? It, it's a really romantic, beautiful, verdant <laughs> sort of Radiohead sort right. of Vaughan Williams song about <laughs> about being close to Windsor, but the property's is left, yeah. <laughs> and he's accidentally dissing it, you know. Um, they, or the critics say it's, it's cold and lifeless and grey or whatever. Yeah. That's my favorite line in the yeah. whole thing. Don't yeah. believe what the critics say. <laughs> it's, 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 yeah, the critics. 
He's, 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 he's a still cloud critic. I know. He still hasn't, you know, f- forgiven Sir John Betjeman for the writing about it in the 50s. That's what's so brilliant about it, though, is that, like, David Brent would hear somebody, like, uh, perform this beautiful song that's an ode to their town, whether it's, like, New York City or any of these big cities. And that's he's right. like, he's like, yeah, no, 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 my, my city the same. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 Do I, you choose the music, by the way? Sorry. Do you choose the music, like, for, uh, for extras and for the audience? Yeah. I yeah. love the, the, the theme songs are amazing. Yeah, I've, um, uh, uh, in fact, Jane played me the, uh, um, Handbags and Cloud Rags years before. I thought it was a great, great track by Rod Stewart. We couldn't afford that version. We had to, um, re-record it with a, a sound alike. Um, wait, was that a radio guy who did your version? Who, who sang the version you guys have? Big, big George Wembley, right? That's right. He, he, he uh, he, um, sort of produced it and we got, a uh, a singer who could do a Rod Stewart. Um, sort of. It's so good. Impression. Yeah, we, it was re-recorded. Yeah, and then um, and it's funny because uh, I was, it was either that or sitting by Cat Stevens, which I loved. Um, and we couldn't afford that either. Um, or we didn't get permission for that. But then we got permission to um use uh um T for the Tiller Man, which, which was, was so one good. One of the first Actually, albums yeah. I ever bought. And I just think it was just it just it just worked. Well, you use a small portion of the songs too, and and an odd portion, like in like the 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 office starts with this just in the middle of the song. It's so good. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, it's it's because it's, it's it's so melancholy and and uh, yeah. Your version is just uh, Rod Stewart's version. I actually I prefer the version you have. I've heard oh, his. Cheers. Um, I mean, his is very good, but I actually prefer the one you have. Maybe just because I'm used to it and I associate it with the show. It's just a little bit sort of sadder, isn't it? It's sort of yeah. like just yeah. Especially yeah. when you're seeing a guy with a fucking with, with, with a hat that has like you know tooth holders for beer and a radio station thing on it, having his <laughs> shoe thrown over a roof. You're like, oh, false fun, just <laughs> false fun, just trying to get through your day until you die. <laughs> you know what it. I mean? Yeah, that's it, isn't it? That's yeah. what, that's what most people. That's what we all do. We try and we try and um, uh, make exciting days more frequent than the most boring days but and then the, we die it's still the best portrayal of that guy of that person who wants to be funny who wants to be and, and yet it's believable like there's too many people that do like fake awkwardness and it feels yeah. fake like oh no that's awkward you're like shut up you know you're good looking but yeah. that feels like a real guy <laughs> yeah well i think i think what um what people realized was that it was an affectionate look at david brent by the end after mm-hmm. sort of ten years, I think they realised that well, actually, we're all a bit like that. That he's all of us. We all do that, and I think that's why people identify with it. It wasn't just them laughing at an idiot. It was deep down they were going, "I've done that." Yeah, we, I, I uh, want to give him a hug. Let me find the idiot yeah, at my work and just yeah. give him a hug. Like, yeah. I'm sorry. He's this getting is your filmed. Life. I got away with it. Right. <laughs> I, I do that every day, and I get away with it because I'm not being filmed. Right. You know. Yeah, right. That's the thing. Like I, when, you, like when you're reading the paper in season two and just this fucking awful speech, and <sighs> the guy's phone rings, and you're like, "Turn it off." You don't, <laughs> if, you don't, if you don't listen, you're not going to enjoy it. It's like what an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, thought, oh. I got that right. So, so uh, when we uh, we lived in, uh, <laughs> you um, don't listen. You're not going to. Oh, I can enjoy it's this, it. It's this, it's this <laughs> disguising this tension. Like he wants, he still wants everybody to have a good time, right? But it's, he's so tense that it's not happening. I saw under that his happen, terms. right? Well, um, uh, about 1985, we went to a little local fight in this. We, we lived in an uh, area called Kings Cross, and it was a little local fight, and it was a shitty little thing, right? And they had nothing there, tombola, and it was the mums making the thing, and there was like you know loads of like toddlers and six year olds running around, and then they all got them down. There's about there was probably about 15 kids sitting down, like 15 six-year-olds, right? And this old guy, his name was, uh, I won't say his name because he's, oh, he must be dead now. Oh, it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> anyway, um, he had a little Punch and Judy show and he was about 75 and he's obviously done this all his life and he came out and he's going, oh, Mr. Punch, right? And there's kids talking and he, and, at one point, you saw Mr. Punch just slam down, and he came out, and he goes, if you're not going to listen, you're not going to enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> just shout at these six-year-olds. <laughs> and, all the rest went, and he went back in. <laughs> and I just thought, well, that, I can't watch him now. No, I've just seen, And that's the thing about a heckle. If you're too harsh on someone with a heckle, yeah. you've, they've, they, you've ruined the show. For them. Because they go, if, if a, if a comedian audience. really gets... Uh, I've seen comedians go, go really, go, you fucking idiot. And I, and, I, and I think, 
well, that's it now. <laughs> now you've got to go <laughs> back to doing your funny it. little act. <laughs> where, or you just seem that you want to stab this guy in the audience. <laughs> and sometimes we do, you know. There's, that's um, a great point. There's a weird thing when you get yelled at. You have to gauge immediately what level do I hit them back at. And if yeah. somebody yells at the front row and they yell something, you A, have to repeat what they say so everyone knows what of you're course, addressing. I've, I've made that mistake before. And I've just like, answered them. I've just said, with two legs. And goes, what? I go, he, well, he said, yeah. <laughs> but once in a while, you get a dream heckle. Yeah. Like I was at the cellar one night having an amazing set on a Saturday and this shitty bachelorette party was in the back. Oh. And it was a good show. And everyone knew it was a good show. And they heckled, they yelled something, oh. which was basically an invitation to be barbaric because they yelled something so unnecessary and so confrontational. Yeah. So I knew I had free range yeah. to really, like, to say whatever I wanted. Once in a while, you get one of those. But it's horrible when they just yell yeah. at you. Yeah, and the if front. they say something that's funny or sweet or complimentary, you just, you just say thank you very much. Yeah. You don't, there's no... There's no need to, you know, and I never have stock put downs. I, I mean, I remember the first time I saw a stock put down, I thought, oh, that was great. Then I heard nine other people do the same yeah. thing. You think, what? Oh, don't, really? Yeah. You're, you're relying on no one ever been to a comedy club before if you're doing those. Yeah. And I, I, you've got to gauge everything, but you know, I, I, as I say, if you, if you're playing a theatre and they've paid a hundred bucks to come and see you, they're not there to heckle. Right. They're there to, you know, to be entertained. So, but, um, I, I didn't. I don't do those clubs. Any, I never did really. Um, but I don't. I don't. I don't really do those clubs. The you stock know? put down. Sorry, Sam. The stock. The stock put downs. Are whoever first came up with them is a genius. Yeah. Whoever first said to somebody loud in the audience, "Hey, where'd you learn to whisper in a helicopter?" Yeah. That was That's a great. comic genius. Whoever said that yeah. first. And and the other one was um, annoying, isn't it? Um, you come up for a conversation and someone builds a comedy club around you. Oh. Really good. Uh, yeah. hey, you're bothering me while I'm working. Do I bother you when you're working? Do I get out of the corner and slap the dicks out of your mouth? Exactly. Whoever said that yeah. the first time? Yeah. Exactly. But only the first time. Only the first yeah. guy. Only the first Somebody time. said it first. Yeah. <laughs> if you were the heckler, they wouldn't know how true it was. <laughs> well, I don't get paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> he pays for it. How did you know that? How the hell did you know that? Exactly. I just say, thank you, madam, and I walk away. <laughs> madam. <laughs> I'd love, I've, as Jim ever said, thank you, madam, to anyone. <laughs> what scenario is it that Jim Norton said, thank you, madam? <laughs> madam. I'll tell you, there's a pile of something on his chest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not a madam. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> nice cock, madam. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. But that, that all depends on your perspective on things. Know, That's, yeah. sure. That's a I great know. bumper sticker to sell. It's that. annoying. If I'm called transphobic, I have to argue with it. If you call transphobic, you just send him a phone. <laughs> and go, does this look like I'm transphobic? It was the yeah. craziest accusation ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just look at my, just look at the first three pictures on yeah. my phone. Scroll to the left and <laughs> keep going. <laughs> look at this video. Look at that little guy there in the corner. Does he look transphobic? Does that guy look, look at the guy with his mouth full. Does that look transphobic to you? No, look at him looking up with gratitude in his face. That's not transphobia. Is that his pudding? That's joy. Is that his pudding? That's it. He's Jesus. had his pudding. This is unbelievable. This is Going out on air. That's well it. done, guys. Did you ever? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well done, guys. You've carved out such a, uh, a niche. A niche. Yeah. <laughs> Is that the yeah. word? Did yeah. you ever catch any shit from from young comics that were jealous that you didn't have to go through uh, uh, the club system to achieve kind of being well respected by? Legendary uh, comics. I don't know. I don't think they'd have done it to my face. Right. I, I don't think comics come up and go, I'm jealous of you. Cause that's, what, cause that's like, like young comics. All they want is for like Norton or Louis CK or Chris Rock or any of these guys to be like, yeah, we can, we can speak on a level that we, we can relate to each other as comedians. Well, I think, I think there's a myth about there's rules of what makes you a good comedian. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I it, there's, there's a thousand ways to become a good comic, and it, it's it's such a huge field. I mean, it, it used to annoy me when whenever it had like you know the top top hundred comedians of all time, they were all stand ups. And I thought, well, hold on, what about what about these guys who are doing amazing stuff and they they don't do stand up, right? You know, yeah. There's there's comedy isn't just stand up. It's it's one one string to to a bow. So um, I know why that happens though, because it's the purest form. And you can't hide behind anything, and it's just you up there. Um, less and less, though, nowadays, because more I find out more and more comedians have writers, you know, which is right. Roddy right. Dangerfield had writers. He was one right, of the exactly. Well, they're old co comics. They used to do jokes, didn't they? So you know, we had that. You know, it, like 
in the 80s when it came in, uh, you know, I, 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 as far as I can work out. I think, I think the, you know, new wave comedians, uh, they were lumped together because they were probably not racist, not sexist, right? But actually, I think the big difference between old comics and new comics is that the new comics wrote their own material and they told the truth. They wrote about their own lives as opposed to that shared pool. Like in the 50s and 60s and 70s, the biggest comics in, there might be 10 big comics in Britain and they all shared jokes. Really? They just all shared jokes. They, they, you know, the northern, you know, they, you know, and they were all racist and sexist and my wife jokes, you know. Uh, and they were comics and it was, you know, they, they all had a thing. Some were weird, some were, you know, rude, some were cockney, some were scousers, some were, you know, but they were basically just telling real old-fashioned jokes and then the new comics came out and they deconstructed it and did other things and and uh and nowadays it's rare for me to see a, a, a comedian like that and just tell one-liners right there are yeah. they're great you know i don't do that but now i think i want to i want to get a piece of that person's life but you, you don't know? You, you don't use any writers no yeah no never never have you know um which you know because also i, I want to i want people to know Everything I say is true. If I'm saying it's true, it's the truth, you know. And I think, you know, when I see a, a, a comedian going, oh, isn't it weird, ladies and gentlemen, when you're on the bus, you haven't been on a bus. Wait a minute, don't, that's yeah. not yours, you know. <laughs> I was going through uh, customs. No, you weren't. Yeah. <laughs> no, you weren't. One of your writers was. And, I, yeah. and it, the, 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 I think the bottom falls out of it. Yeah, I think so. For me. I've dropped, I don't write one-liners or surreal jokes. And the ones I have, I've put them in the set. And they go, wow, but I think, oh, maybe they think the other jokes are lies. So I've dropped them. So I don't do right. surreal. I do, I, I, I did a joke, um, a couple of times and I didn't like the way it's set. It, 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 it feels fraudulent. Sometimes yeah. saying certain things, do, you're right, it does feel like, I don't believe that. Yeah, and if he lied that time, is this joke a lie as well? And right. I like it to be all based in truth. I, I, I wrote a joke once, um, uh, oh, but I had a bit of bad news today, actually. Days ago, and, um, um, my friend committed suicide. He just went upstairs and swallowed everything in the bathroom cabinet. Choked on a tampon. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's so not me. It's so funny, and I just thought, that's not me. <laughs> right, it's Dad, just a joke. Yeah, yeah. That, and I don't do that. I can do it, you know, but I thought, it, for for the next two jokes, are they going, is there a sucker punch coming? Is there a gag here? Right. And, and I, I want it to be, I want it to take, I want, I want to tell a story. That's what I want to do, over an hour. Mm -hmm. It's got a slight narrative, almost, mm -hmm. my stuff, you know. And it deconstructs, and it, and, it, and it, I'm always examining stuff. It's analytical. It's almost like a little lecture. And right. that's what I do, and I think that's what I'm good at. Do you know um, who I started watching, too? And again, another Ozzy Osbourne recommendation. He was one of his favorite comics as a kid, so of course I went to YouTube. Tommy Cooper, who oh, I've talked about great. before, he was a really he funny did, dude. He did what he did better than anyone's uh, ever done before. Um, he was a, a buffoon, a big guy, uh, who come out, and he's, uh, <clears throat> and he'd do jokes like, uh, um, I went to the doctor, uh, he's a, I said, it hurts me when I do that. And he'd lift his arm up. And the doctor said, don't do it then. <laughs> it was things like that. I've got a real pain in my chest. And then he put, he opens his jacket and pulls out a window pane. Like, yeah, little dumb really, shit. Really dumb Punny. things. And he'd do magic tricks that always went wrong in, until the end. So it was just, he was, he was playing like, it was quite sort of postmodern because he was playing a person who was terrible at comedy. Right. He was very but funny. It was great, wasn't it? It yeah. was like it was almost like a really modern character act, but he was, you know, just a buffoon. So Those guys were also very very hamstrung by content. You know, like Lenny Bruce kicked through by talking about religion and Catholicism. But those guys weren't allowed to talk about religion. They couldn't talk about sex. So a lot of those guys who did kind of intermingle jokes, they had such limited uh, range of what was acceptable to talk about in a club. Sure. So they, sure. a lot of times, I think that kind of. And that was by them. law, though, wasn't it? They could, you know, the, the yes. obscenity laws and stuff. Or it would know. ruin your career. Like Jackie Mason, the myth, Ed Sullivan thought that he did the fuck you sign on his show, but he didn't. And he had, G hurt Jackie's career badly. Like for years, he had him banned from television because he thought Jackie Mason had done an obscene gesture, which he apparently didn't do. I haven't seen the set. But, uh, you know, like, if somebody back then... Well, it's, yeah, I suppose, but it still happens now, like, like, um, disgraced comedians are ones that work for the BBC, that have got a handcuff deal, you know, and then, and then they lose their job and it's, like, really embarrassing. Whereas, I think if you do your own thing and you're, uh, you're sort of pretty bulletproof, if you're not beholden to anyone, then, you know, you go where, in fact, 
you know, I, I think if you if you're doing stand up and doing the stuff sort of stuff I do, uh, a scandal about a terrible joke sells tickets. Sure, it doesn't hurt. Yeah. no one's going to go because those, those people aren't coming to my shows anyway. Right. People who care about blasphemy laws or obscenity laws, they're not buying a ticket to my show. So it's 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 totally irrelevant to me. I think it was the days where you were sort of owned. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, and, uh, uh. Well, you could now, be hurt by one person not well, liking yeah, you, could yeah, hurt you. Right. Now, now the biggest broadcaster in the world is the internet anyway. So, if, if you can't, if you can't get two minutes on Cone or Letterman, so what? You know, there's, 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 there's eight, was it 800 million people on Twitter, 1.5 billion people on Facebook? You know? You, you you find your niche and and you work it. How how many people do you want coming to to your show? You can so uh, I, I think people sort of live and die by the sword nowadays. It's a lot it's a lot fairer. Even with all this stifling these lies and this political correctness and that. Even with all that, um, there's the truth will out. You 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 know you you will live and die by your own morality and and you know if you, again if you don't break the law. I'm going to come see you this Sunday. I think we have to break, right? We do have to break. We have to break. Yep. Uh, but, Ricky, you're always amazing. And just to promote everything we need to promote, Humanity World Tour, which is sold out everywhere in the world except a new show in uh, uh, New York City going on sale. Uh, for It's in October. It's going on sale this Friday, 10 a.m. Exactly, New York time. And L.A., uh, 10 a.m. L.A. time for October to do a third show. At the Dolby. At, at the, the Dolby the Theater. home of the Oscars. Oh, that's where that is. Yeah, that's the only chance I'll ever get to be on that stage. <laughs> well, please, Mr. Showbiz, I didn't, I didn't even know where it was. I'm like, really? <laughs> RickyGervais.com for tickets. Uh, this, these shows will sell out. I believe I'm coming to see you this Sunday. You're in the New York. Right, yeah. And yeah. Uh, I'm doing my own hour tonight uh, at the Fat Black Pussycat around the corner from the Comedy Cellar. I'm working out the new hour if you want to come. Where's and that? What's that? I, I know the Comedy Cellar. That's like the only, I think, I know that and Caroline's in one other there's place two, in New York. There's two Comedy Cellars. Uh, there was one on is West... It, one upstairs and one downstairs. What's that? The, the Village Underground is a co a new, another comedy cellar. Oh, it's the it? same comedians, and upstairs is the Village Underground. I want to do that just for the fun of it. You uh, should. It's where Colin works out his material. It, it seats about a hundred people, and it's it's an amazing space. We do they do new joke there Monday, Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Colin will usually work out his new hour as one man show. He's not there tonight, so I'm I love Colin. I don't think I quite. I, I heard this myth of uh, it was the only person that Jerry Seinfeld followed, and I'd, I'd heard him. I spoke to him on this show, and I, I wasn't quite aware of him. Because uh, I'm from England, um, and um, and uh, then I saw him on the comedian that Jerry Seinfeld thing, and he's he's great, isn't he? Have you seen his 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 his, uh, his shows, his Netflix specials? No, he, no. Unconstitutional New York story. He's great, isn't he? Amazing. He's, he's, he's yeah, fucking yeah. brilliant. He, been, it annoys me. I've been rediscovering like people that I was really late. I, I just got the end of um, Patrice. You know, uh, and I've yeah. just, I've gone back and seen everything he's ever done, uh, uh, every, you know, uh, that's on YouTube. Yeah. It's amazing. There's no one like him. He'd come out, he'd start, he'd walk out and he'd start with the most contentious thing <laughs> and then work backwards. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then slowly as, I've as the things progressed, that, winning uh, uh, more and more that, and more there's people. There's never been bravery like that. Yeah. Not yeah. To, to, you know, to knock everybody out first and then try to get them back. Unbelievable. Yeah. And I'd never heard, uh, I'd heard of him, but I'd never seen any uh, Mitch Hedgeberg stuff as yeah. well. Yeah. Mitch was so great. Yeah. Right. Got that. Just a brilliant writer, really funny performer. Um, yeah, you should check, obviously, but you should see Colin, man. He's, his stuff is so, you know what the thing about Colin is? He never ever, and as a comedian, it's inspirational because he never takes a shortcut to a joke. And when you watch it, I forget years ago, I was on the stage at the cellar doing some dog shit joke. It was some cheap, and he walked through the audience to use the bathroom, and I just hear him go, uh, good writing, lazy. And I'm like, oh God, you're right. That joke stunk. <laughs> but he really, he's really, uh, he never, when you watch him, you're like, this is a guy really never Never ever doing what he thinks they want. He's truly. I hate to say because it, it sounds corny and poetic. Yeah, but he's a real artist, and you, and you yeah, watch no, him and, and like and, it's inspirational. And I like his face, which is an odd thing to say with someone who's so good. But yeah, he looks like I mean? Bert Lahr. He really. He's he's, I like his attitude. I yeah. do like his attitude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like um. Uh, you know Doug Stanhope. I love oh, Doug. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. He's he's the one that's pushing stuff at the moment. He's and amazing. Really, Doing it from the gut, isn't he? Yes. yes, and a lot cleverer than it looks like. It looks like a rant, but he's—he's. He's, I've—I've I've been watching him for a, a few years. And yourself, Jim's coming along, any? He? Oh, he's I don't there. know. He's getting there. Oh, he's getting, he's getting shy now. Though. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not good at compliments. I'd rather talk about Colin and Doug. His, his, okay. his last Netflix special was like Jim's was on another level. Like, 
Well, thanks, Jim. It was really good. Oh, come on, guys. Well, okay, let's mix it with it. Okay, uh, Jim is such a good comedian, he deserves to be tied down and <laughs> shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. by, by, a, by a jailer. By yeah. a blind jailer. <laughs> yeah. That's how good he is. <laughs> Listen, I want to apologize to anybody who is uh, has nearsighted or farsighted for that, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I just meant the guy shitting on him didn't know how ugly the thing that he was shitting on was. <laughs> oh, That's what I meant. <laughs> 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 Who would shit on anything that fucking ugly? Oh. Yeah, just hideous. <laughs> yeah, fucking okay, disgusting. I didn't realize that. Oh, is that oh, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's yeah, pro yeah. jail or anti jail? Yeah, right, yeah, I accept yeah. that. <laughs> hideous puddle of humanity is getting shat upon. I'm not even worth the man shit. <laughs> okay, no, I understand. <laughs> clean that mess up. You yeah. mean throw that thing away and leave the shit? No. <laughs> no, clean the shit off that, that thing. You've left the shit. That thing. You've thrown the thing away. <laughs> We're meant to keep the thing. Here's the and problem. Clean. Jim lays. <laughs> Jim puts down a garbage bag and lays on top of it to get shit on, and then they just pick the garbage bag up and tie it up, <laughs> throw it out. Oh, no, it's just the whole thing is out. Oh. It's not, not entirely true. Uh, not entirely true. <laughs> what's the break? Is this what's the break for? We, we just have to. Do we have do, to break to do a read? We, 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 we'll yeah. do the read, and then I'll, I can go. You can. What do you do then? What do we do then? We have. We're only on the air until about ten <laughs> of eleven. <laughs> you get spot. You what? You get people. Oh, uh, it's sponsored. Yeah, oh, I can wait. So who? Listens to this show, right? The people at home, like, pe- yeah, but uh, people who are, uh, you know, mobile phones. Um, we want that little lizard who likes getting shat upon to, to, <laughs> to get to get people to buy our phone. Who? Right. who who fucking advertises on this show? Well, do you have? Here's where we have no. We have to do a live read. I can do the read now. We can talk for another few minutes. We no, don't do have to it. break. Do it. I'm interested in uh, who wants you to you be should. there. It's to actually be... a product that I like, which I okay, uh, good. I would say that. Oh, listen, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not trying to embarrass you about doing. Product oh, you can. That's, that's fine. It's a I'm product ver- that he likes. It's a laxative. But I'm very <laughs> interested on what uh, what CEO of what company says we need Jim Norton to do this. That's, that's <laughs> what I'm doing. Well, a lot of times I'll. <laughs> Here and I'll say, when's the last time you watched your home movies? I'm not even doing the read yet. Right. And there's the music. Now, if you like, uh, if you like most Americans, there's a box in your closet of videotapes, film reels, and photos that don't ever get watched. Worse, they're deteriorating. Introducing Legacy Box. It's a simple and affordable way to get your recorded moments digitally preserved on a DVD or thumb drive. Here's how it works. You simply load Legacy Box with your old tapes, films, pictures, and audio recordings and send it back. I don't know if I'd be comfortable doing that with all of my videos. <laughs> <laughs> but if you have nice ones of your family, <laughs> Jim's got an old—he's got an old film reel that involves a stunt with a coke bottle, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. and then his aunt, his wedding kicks back in. Yeah. <laughs> it's me dressed like Fatty Arbuckle and the wedding. Beep, beep, you know, I can't masturbate to this. <laughs> now you send these back in, and uh, you get them back in a couple of weeks on a DVD or a convenient thumb drive, ready to watch, share, and relive. Hopefully, Legacy Box takes care of. Everything everything and provides updates at every step of the process. That's why over 250,000 families have used them. Huffington Post, Parents Magazine, USA Today, and The View, they're all talking about Legacy Box. And for a limited time, go to LegacyBox.com slash rock to get 40% off your order. LegacyBox.com slash rock for 40% off. And I, I really do want to use this because I have so a bunch you of get, tapes. So you've got all your videos that you don't want to just put in the bin, all, the, all your favorite films on sort of video or uh, DVD or, or whatever. Yeah. And you send them off. And they digitally record them, and mm-hmm. well, they probably don't. They probably give you the the digital record, the the, the actual digital record of all the things that you've done. Yeah, mm-hmm. the, on a DVD or a thumb drive or a thumb drive or something like that. This way, you have it and you can save it. And uh, it's LegacyBox.com/slash/rock for forty percent off. And do they do they mean? But they also mean. Um, movies, not just your home movies. They no, mean... you can't do you can't do movie movies like they oh, won't do oh. for uh, right. copyright stuff. So it's it's all your home movies and things like that that you've ever. I yeah. see, I see. So I like if you a... have it on like a like a like a reel to reel or something, right? You can send it off and then you can actually watch it. And you got it on a thumb drive, you put it in your computer. I'll tell you what like I found it. yesterday: a bunch of sets from like I used to get obs- at the comedy store. They videotape everything, and I have a bunch of videotapes. This is back from like 2005 when I was warming up for more. 2006, I was warming up for my HBO special, and. And I, there's a bunch of d- c- uh, videotapes I found yesterday, and I'm too lazy to go through them. But I'm, a part of me thought of this. I'm like, maybe I'll fucking send them in and get them done just so I can zip through them on, on uh, a thumb drive and then see if I ever want to watch these or if there's anything I can do with them. Yeah. No, it's good. I, when I see, like, a documentary about a guy that I've never heard of, and they've got all this home footage, and I think, I'm so jealous. I've got none of that. Are there videos of you I'm, when you were a kid? There's none no, of me. nothing. 
No, nothing at all. It's like, it's like 2000, before 2015, nothing. <laughs> now, a billion things every day of people filming themselves. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, yeah. All, it's all crap. Everything. And yet there's nothing, there's nothing of me as a kid. Or, or no, I don't just mean. Me, just photos, like, I'm sure, right? Photos. Well, the old photo, yeah, in a, in a, in a, yeah, but probably 50. I've got 50 of me in the bath from yesterday. Right. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> right. It's like... Yeah, no, we're... It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we just had a kid, and it's like everything. Everything is photographed. Every single day there's photos. Are you videotaping a lot? Every single day there's video. Yeah. Oh, let's video the first time he meets the dog. Let's video when he goes here. Oh, let's video him. Look, he's cooing. Video it. Like, there is so much Well, footage. apparently, I don't know if it's true or how they even worked it out, but I think it was 2014 or 2015 when everyone had a phone mm -hmm. there were more photos taken than the rest of history wow wow yeah <laughs> and, and that's, that's presumably doubled trebled it, yeah it's crazy isn't and it and most yeah. of them are probably awful selfie yeah, photos right, right, meaningless photos well, you take 25 don't you of your uh, duck face yeah. and, shoot, and, and tweet one you know and then that gets and then that's how, how many how does that how many does that count of in the on the internet with the retweets that right you know what i mean every photo there's a million Right. Of those photos. Right. Every single photo is, it's, 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 it's copied, 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 it's copied, copied, copied. Do you it's like crazy. pictures of yourself? Cause it's very funny. Your, your, your Instagram and your Twitter are so funny. Cause it's purposely horrible photos of you in the tub. Yeah. Where you take photos of your face all, yeah. but you look dead. And they're yeah. great photos. <laughs> yeah. So do you, do you like when someone says, okay, give me a, a sexy look? Are you no. comfortable? No. no. that's embarrassing. It is, that, right? That, I can't do that. You, 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 I've never particularly, I um, you know, well, after the age of 35, I've never particularly liked it, but as a comedian, you, you've got to be careful, because irony doesn't come across. You, you know what I mean? Right. It's like you don't want people to think, oh, you think, oh, you think you're sexy. That's... Oh, right. Well, I was laughing at you, but you think... Sorry, you think you look a bit like Johnny Depp in that picture, don't you? Yeah. And that's, that's the worst. No, it was a joke. No, yeah, 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 no, yeah, you thought a little bit of you And everyone's vain, but no, um, uh, I suppose you, I, I don't just do it as a defense mechanism. I, when I get a picture of me looking like a, uh, like a fat bloated corpse, <laughs> uh, honestly, I'm so proud of that. Yeah. I've got pictures that I've, t I'm so proud. I say, Jane, look at this. Look what I did. I, I, she goes, yeah, brilliant. And I, you know, I can't believe it. I've found different angles where my stomach looks like 50 times bigger, where you turn the camera upside down, so the... And yeah, I just yeah. love it. I never thought... There was, there's a more unflattering angle. There's I know. an angle that's even yeah. less flattering. And then there's a little bit of alchemy where you do it wrong and there's a, you're in the bath and there's a little bit of foam that looks like spunk coming out your nose <laughs> or something. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it looks so disgusting. Yeah. It's just... It's, 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 it's well, some of us take them where it's, it's spunk and you tell them what it's foam. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but, the, but the self awareness is so far the self awareness of going. Look, I don't want anyone to think that I think I'm sexy. Yeah, like that's the death knell of a comedian when you think you're sexy. It's like no one likes you for that reason. They like you because you're funny. So it's it's funny to think, like when when yeah. comedians get into that, like I'm handsome. People are like, oh, fuck yourself. Yeah, but then there's another part of you when you're public eye and you don't want to give anyone the satisfaction of you accidentally looking shit. Yeah. So you know you wear shades and a hat. If, you know what I mean? You don't want it to, the, the, you know, cl close in on your bald spot. Because you're not, I'm not worried about it, but I hate them thinking they've got me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Like, what are you doing hiding in the bushes and trying to get me in my fucking pyjamas? Do you know what I mean? Right, yeah. So, you, you still go, oh, well, I've got a, yeah, okay, I'm gonna, I'll put a hat on because I haven't done, you know? It's all those things that are annoying that you, you have to have a little bit of pride in yourself just because I don't want to give them the satisfaction. And those bath pics, if someone p does a bad picture of me, I go, that's nothing, look at this. Look what I did. Dude, look, look what, what I, I showed you. You know what I mean? Right. This, yeah. I look pretty good there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you own it. When you own something, unless it's completely horrible, but if you own things, it's harder for people to get you on them. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This that's, is how I look. That, yeah, and I was like, this is my dick. You know, this <laughs> is my gym. This is my, this is my horrible, pustulating, reptilian, um, barbed <laughs> penis. Right. Right. So when you see it in, in private and you scream, what the fuck are you doing? I've already shown you what I've got now. <laughs> I'm owning this. I'm owning this. <laughs> you know? Hey, look, you knew it dripped when it I was, sent you the picture. <laughs> he was actually excited by that. He didn't like us saying he's a great stand-up, but no. he actually giggled with joy when I said reptilian cock. Right. Right. Let's go back to my dick. Don't worry about my stand-up. Don't worry about my stand-up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest. I have a couple of, of good photos of my dick, which I'm happy to send out. <laughs> I okay, okay. A good. lot of bad ones, but a couple of real gems that are that really are deceptive. A good thing to do, right, as well, is a little a little tip, right? Um, 
with your penis, right? <laughs> you, you draw two little eyes, right, on a bit of paper, and cut those out, like two little eyes, right? Put those on the side, turn your penis, um, uh, uh, 90 degrees, right? Okay. So the little... The little mouth bit is like a little <laughs> fish. His mouth. And right, you open, sure, oh, sure, sure. You open and shut that, and the little eyes. It looks like a little fish. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just a little fun. It's like a puppet. That's the new puppet show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 And you dress it up, and I yeah, you, uh, tin forest, Robocock, <laughs> a, little, a little puppet theatre, little the fishy. Yeah, yeah it comes. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was. And that's why I was fired for my children's <laughs> That's yeah. And there you go. There's the misdirection. Oh, child molesting isn't funny. No, it was misdirection. Don't you get yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> it didn't really that's work that, with kids. That's what, that puppet, that's what that puppeteer was doing when he told the kids, if you don't listen, you're not going to enjoy oh, this. I still remember that. <laughs> it was a poor 75-year-old bloke <laughs> screaming at some six-year-olds. I could hear th where real stuff from the office came from. I could look at, literally watch a six-hour documentary yeah. on that. When you oh, find nothing out, makes me happy. A real uh, person did that. Yeah. That's where that yeah. comes you know, from. The Brent Brent speech when he's trying to win over the Swindon lot. Yeah, that came from me watching a uh, uh, open mic competition, and oh. this guy was so bad and nervous. I hated it, and there was comics with me that were loving it. Yeah, I was going. That's a human being up there. You don't like watching a guy I can't eat do his it. balls. I can't do it. I can't. It's I, literally I, Jim's favorite thing to watch. I can't do it. I, I can't watch it, other people being embarrassed. I don't mind being. I don't get embarrassed. I want to soak it up. I want to save them. If someone, if someone socially, if they do a bad joke and no one laughs and they go red, I just, I want to <laughs> take. Do you know what I mean? I want to take rescue on them, right? Yeah. I want to take on. Ah, fall over. Oh God, I've shot myself. I've shot myself. Yeah. You know, I can't stand uh, other people being uncomfortable too close to me. That's do you know what I mean? How do you feel about that, Jim? You love it, don't you? I understand his instinct for that, though. I feel the same way, but I also relish in it, like, ugh, good. Yeah. I do in retrospect, and then I fictionalize it, and then I can live through it, and it's great. So, that David Brent thing was, I saw a, I saw an open mic where he came out, and he was shaking. So the audience went quiet. His hand was shaking on the mic. And he came out, and he went, you know when you're in a, a, a cab, and he went, oh, no. <laughs> right? <laughs> and he got out a bit of paper from his back pocket and went, Oh. <laughs> no, right, so I was in a, I was in a cab, right, and he starts doing the joke, and he goes wrong, and he goes, oh, right, and it was silence, and it was just silence, right, people were lo not looking at him, right, and then he said, oh, I thought I was going on last. <laughs> it all got so real. It just got so, and he went quiet, and then he went, uh... I was meant to do seven minutes, but I'm just going to go off now. <laughs> right? Why and would you he, admit to it? Right, and then he said, he ended it, and everyone was quiet, right? And then he said, and then he said, right, oh, if I never do this again, you'll know why. <laughs> <laughs> and then he went, cheers, and they sort of clapped that. And Politely. it was the worst, and I thought, oh, I'll have that. that I'll have that. that I'll have that David Brent was... doing an open mic spot in the office trying to win over people who didn't want to... That exacerbated sound that... <sighs> Like that to I me know. is the best sound. But, then, but real, but, I mean, <sighs> but, but, real comics do it. The, uh, I've been so many like proper comics, and they're doing well. And they, then they say you didn't like that. They loved. I played here last week, and they absolutely loved that gag. Oh, so they'll do it on stage. I want to go, why are you telling them off for not liking a joke yeah. you did last week? It's really... The audience has got to be reminded that you do that joke all the time anyway. Right, they're, they're supposed and to live in this illusion that, but like... But why are you telling off the audience? <laughs> they didn't... It's your fault. There, I want you all to know there's nothing wrong with that joke. <laughs> Although, that, that, the people do laugh at that joke. There's nothing wrong. Right. Like, you I need know. to take a look at yourselves. Yeah. yeah. I, I was working out a joke recently, and I, I, again, this Tuesday night workout I do where you just work out the hour, oh, you have paper with you, yeah. and uh, I worked out this joke, and it was bombing every time I did it, and I loved the joke, and I finally asked the audience, it was, again, it's that type of thing, it's a hundred people, you're holding oh, paper. Oh, that's right, no, I'd love to do that. I'm yeah. like, that joke, what is it with that joke? Do you understand, what, what, what does it sound like, I'm, and somebody told me what it sounds like I'm saying in the joke, oh. and I'm like, oh, that's oh. not even what I was saying, oh, really? I'm delivering it wrong, oh, the joke, right. it's not a great joke. I, I loved it, cause I, because I Because you're stupid. Peach impediment. Uh, uh, speech, speech impediment. <laughs> Peach impediment. Peach impediment. Yeah. yeah. They, I piss pronunciate worms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you talk like you got a cock in your mouth. Um, so you didn't realize that they were actually hearing a completely different sentence. I w it was just not clear what I was trying oh, to that's say. That's amazing. Yeah, it can and, be anything. And it wasn't even a great joke. It just made me so happy to say it, and I'm so bummed it didn't work. But it was funny when they told me. Well, I love the idea that you can pay. To go see Jim 
perform, like you think you're going to see a Jim Norton show, and you end up workshopping the routine. And it's an like hour. Yeah, but the, the I mean, most of it is is actually good. But that, by the way, that scene where you did that scene, I got to talk about one more thing too, because before I forget about watching the making of The Office, where you where you're holding that paper and you sit down, and he goes, David, David Brent, and you go, what, whatever. And you said whatever, like that was the most real, <laughs> yeah. just, like I'm just got in un- shell shock yeah. response. That was exactly yeah. how the someone the is world after is a bad set. Is not only is he just bomb, oh. and he's thinking why. So he's been filmed, and his nemesis is, is talking to him, and he's it's charming. Just, it's just the, yeah, the, yeah. I like going through the worst day ever. I do like I, I do like. What's the worst day ever? And I was know? very jealous, by the way, watching the making of the Office Christmas special. I'm, I love Jimmy Carr. I didn't know you guys went back that far. Was he was driving you around? Correct. He because he lived in Slough. Is wow. that why it was you, him, and Stephen Merchant? I think in yeah. his car. I'm and like, what Jimmy, the fuck, wow. Jimmy Carr? How does he know these guys? Yeah, he he lived in Slough. I think he still lived in Slough at that point when we were doing it. And was so, he not but, as famous back then as he is now? I guess uh, that was 2002, around there, no, right? No, it was, it was, it was coming through the ranks. Uh, we started at about the same time, actually. Oh, okay. Uh, um, in fact, I did my first Edinburgh show with Jimmy. Um, uh, He's uh, a guy that, by the way, does kind of like very jokey punchlines, but it works for him. It's, it's kind of who he is. When you- yeah, he does. It, the, he, yeah, uh, 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 he does great jokes, and he's very prolific. And the, one of the reasons I don't is because uh, there's it's. It's so labour intensive to do an hour of one liners and all of them be as good as the next, which is nearly impossible. Um, it, it's honestly, my, I can make a joke worth work t- ten minutes, you know, and deconstruct it, and, I, and I've got a momentum. Whereas if you do a one liner and you get a laugh, and that took three seconds, you got to start from scratch. Oh, yeah, right. You've got another another one line that lasts three seconds. Then you've got another. I go, Jesus! It's I, exhausting. It's exhausting. And and sometimes, unless yeah. they're really amazing, and there's got you know, I, I think I think the best one liner um, have got a bit of character with it as well. Like, so if you go to Stephen Wright and Emo Phillips, they have got a little bit of momentum because you know where it's coming from. Yeah. So you start you start getting it before they open their mouth almost. So there's a there is a little bit of narrative built in. Um, and Stu Francis, I don't know if you know Stuart Francis, no. amazing guy. Again, he's, he's, he's got that. It, there's, there is a, but yeah, some one-liners, comics, um, the one-liner works as well if you read them as well as they do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's almost they, they've taken themselves out of the equation. They've done the, They've done the syntax and the semantics, and then they've handed over the joke to the world. And it's and funny it, if you just read it as you, well. You can't exactly, and you can't own it because it's a pun. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So uh, uh, it's hard to protect that sort of thing. But hats off to them. You know, I write one one liner a, a month, and I don't use it. Do you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> the only, when I do, I, I, what I do um, like uh, doing is. Um, a special occasion one liners because they can never be used again. So I really enjoy writing one liners for the Golden Globes because it's about the occasion, sure. it's about that time. That I can, you know, I can't use it again really. Yeah. Um. So that that's fun for me. And, and if I, you're going to do like something, the art, I love the art form. I do love the art form. Can I do it? You know, it's but a one liner is a little story in the shortest possible number of words. Yeah. That's what that's what a one liner is really. They're hard to do to do well. I yeah, admire guys no, that can really do them. Jimmy Carr does. He'll do an hour and eighteen. Of he fucking hammers. I mean, he kills harder than most comics, and it's all funny. It's like it's really yeah. amazing to watch. Yeah, but it, really it must. It, it, you're right. It must be. It, it must be so labor intensive. It's how your mind works. We have to wrap up. By the way, they're oh. going to shut us off. I think our, our show actually ends. Right, Travis. Yes. Um, <laughs> so yeah, Travis just said yes into the. So let me plug Ricky properly because our show is ending. Uh, the Humanity World Tour. If you want to see Ricky, which uh, we are going on Sunday. For, uh, in October, he's back here at Madison Square Garden, October the uh, 10th, this Friday morning. Uh, uh, tickets go on sale for October, whenever it is. Yeah, 10 a.m. this Friday. 10 a.m., sorry. York, yeah. For, in the- October, and then uh, in L.A. in October, uh, this uh, this Friday in L.A., 10 a.m. Exactly. And uh, if you guys want, I'm doing my hour tonight, uh, Fat Black Pussycat 7 p.m. show, and uh, the Chip Chipperson podcast is up, and our podcast goes up today, right? Uh, yes, it went up this morning. If you search Jim Norton and Sam Roberts on iTunes or SoundCloud, you can hear... 
Maria Bamford and Chris Gethard on our show. Will this be a podcast? It this will, will be, be yeah. a podcast. Let's plug this. Yeah, this, this will this actually is, be a podcast. This is dynamite. People are, <laughs> people are already going, when can I listen to this again? They are. This, when can I hear this hour and a half of drivel and, <laughs> and Jim being shat upon by various... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, well, yeah. well, it'll be on demand later today. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Rick. You're always the best. Cheers. Thank you, guys. See you tomorrow. Oh, my God. This has been Jim Norton and Sam Roberts.